scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And um, it's a lot of sacrifice outside overflow. One, two, three. Thank you so much. Those following us online, we bless you. The Lord honor you in the name of Jesus. Good evening, everybody. It's my joy to be here. Please help us sound. Let's have some quality. Praise God. It's my joy to introduce a very great man and his wife. Hallelujah. I seldom do this, but they gave us a very great visit. Hallelujah. I simply call him honorable. He's a politician, but a very anointed one. All the way from um, Adamawa State through Abuja and here. Adamawa State House of Assembly. Hallelujah. Honorable sir. John Terry and his lovely wife. Let's honor them. Please honor them. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma. I honor you. Thank you so, so much. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Success Systems Part 2. Let's get to the business of the night. Success Systems Part 2. Knowledge is very important to walking in victory and dominion. And one of the blessings of God in this ministry is the grace he has granted us to be able to unravel the mysteries of the kingdom. The secrets that um, are responsible for the strange lifting of men. He's spoken to us that this is our year of triumph and is teaching us and helping us understand the mysteries of the kingdom I've said it again that the kingdom of God is made up of systems everyone says systems there is a system with which God imparts his grace upon people there is a system with which men receive restoration there is a system with which men are lifted there is a system with which men last and are preserved and in this series God is helping us to uncover the demands that govern lasting kingdom success as well as the laws praise the Lord we started last week defining a lot of things terminologies we spoke about success we spoke about the reality of laws please get part one if you were not here we don't have all the time to go back but um, I just want to do a quick recap on the first law we began to discuss the laws and the principles I told us that laws create predictability say predictability when you operate by laws your results become consistent regardless of what the opposing forces are you don't approach life emotionally you will fail life is too dynamic for just emotionalism you must approach life from a standpoint of exact understanding there are principles that produce consistent results and god is helping us to understand the first law that we looked at last week was the law of relationships I cannot um, I cannot tell you how many testimonies already have come in strange testimonies 
as a result of this one understanding the fastest way to become successful is through quality relationships it is a law that governs success i said last week that anything money can buy relationships can buy it anything at all anything money can buy relationship can pay for for sure the distance between you and the next level of your life is a relationship who knows you matters in the school of success who you meet matters who likes you matters are we together now these are the mysteries that many well-meaning believers do not know they do not understand and so we pray in tongues we fast we are um, excited but then we fail woefully in almost every other area of life I said a few things about relationships um, that I think is important we pay attention to I said how that relationship is an investment the same way you invest in stocks the same way you invest in agriculture the same way you invest in your shop the same way you invest in education that is how you invest in relationships it will cost you are we together now relationships will cost you your ego relationships will especially from the part of the one who is the chief recipient there are many people whose arrogance will not allow them invest in quality relationships that will build a jimmy used to say that one of the um, greatest things that can happen to a man is to partner with a man who is building something great 50 naira invested in a quality relationship today can give you an estate tomorrow what an investment there are many foolish believers who are not part of anybody's success story there is no future for a man who is not part of anybody's success story someone should be able to say you discerned the grace of god upon him and stretched a right hand of fellowship when the rest could not see it my life is blessed today by the grace of god because i have i i was able to discern people discern potentials discern greatness even when the the custodians of those virtues did not know it see there are certain things you do that will pay you for life one of it is discerning greatness and investing in it through quality relationships i gave an instance of people who have been so instrumental in my life these were people who had the eyes to see when there were no physical results and today i owe them partnership to make sure they succeed regardless of what their personal failures are they are the risk they took to believe in me is a debt that i must pay for a lifetime who owes you gratitude because of a quality relationship muslims have this they know this they excel overnight because of the capacity to discern many believers have this ugly thinking that because all of us can approach God directly we don't need men you will always need men for as long as you are alive make reference to my teaching the gift of men you need relationships I told us relationships are advantageous connections advantageous connections there are nonsense and foolish relationships and we received grace last week to get out of it i hope that that grace worked for you during the week because there are relationships that are going nowhere complete um you have to be connected you have to be connected in ministry you have to be connected strategically in business you have to be connected we call it networking in politics you have to be connected you ask honorable here he will tell you you cannot rise no matter what god told you that is your business but as far as impact is concerned god told me i'll be great thank god he didn't tell everybody he told you you must understand the wisdom keys that will make others buy into that vision relationships will require being friendly the bible says he who wants friends must first show himself friendly this attitude of wanting people to be this you are not my class you are not my uh, what do we call it my size you are not my expectation is what is the costly mistake people have made that 
some are still paying for it today and they will pay forever you must have the discernment jesus understood that as powerful as his agenda was he needed men and so he was able to invest in them regardless of their failures he watched them as they stumbled they fell relationship is not about perfection relationship is about understanding you must know that perfection is not a requirement for relationship replace perfection with sincerity of heart are we learning now please pay attention to what i'm teaching you this is not one of the ways people become great this is the way people become great you can earn a living through relationships there are people who are not doing anything you look at them and you think they are they are occultists or they deal in drugs they have invested in the lives of too many people for them to fail they can sit down at home yet they are all thank you they thank you pays them salary every month without retirement god is giving you an opportunity today to make quality relationships that will bless you tomorrow it's a lesson i learned from my father like i told us last week my father knows somebody almost everywhere if it's an armed robber he knows a policeman somewhere who can show up when required are we together now if it's for discount for fertilizer somebody somewhere he knows someone in the ministry of agri if it's to help you bring your car from Cotonou, there is somebody he knows. What a wise way of living. I watch relationship pay many bills for my father. If you use money to pay for everything in life, you are not wise. Did you hear what I said? Let me repeat myself. If you use only money to pay for everything in life, everything in life is bought, but money is not the only currency. Integrity is currency relationships are currencies heavier and weightier currencies the the least valuable of all the currencies that we use to purchase things in life is finances trust me when i say this someone will not give you money but he will give you what you would have bought with the money he gave you two things access and he took away pain from your life are we together now we must trust God for grace to be able to access quality relationships. One of the points that I did not mention last week that I, I think that I must stress before we continue is what I teach in the school of ministry. I teach our school of ministry students. Um, I call it the fundamental law of human relations and it's important. I'm going to state it. I want you to understand there is a key to attracting people to your life it is the ability to satisfy the highest psychological need of every man you must know it and the highest psychological need of any man at all including you any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued or valuable and the need to feel appreciated please write it down any man will die to see this happen in his life the highest psychological need of any man is the need to feel loved the need to feel valued the need to feel appreciated please write it down and let's talk a little about that because many believers think that just because you are born again relationships will happen overnight no people have lost contracts worth billions because they have intelligence but no relationships and in the body of Christ, we have this ugly way of saying, I don't need anybody. I'm not talking of some negative Godfatherism. Somebody must recommend you somewhere. Are we together now? Come, my dear. Come too. Now, everybody, I want you to give them a round of applause. Smile while you are doing that, two of them. I will tell you why. Just clap for them generously and truthfully keep clapping don't stop this is for two of you now keep clapping i didn't ask you to stop praise god god bless you now watch them what are they both doing or what were they both doing do you think if you ever tell them i'm a bad man they will believe you no i satisfied in one minute 
the highest psychological need of any man by this act they don't even know what they did but i gave them an impression of being loved i gave them an impression of being valued i gave them an impression of being appreciated brothers let me give you a big secret do this you are 50 percent gone to get a very good godly lady frown your face praying alone and i show you the way to misery regardless of spirituality yes time tested rock solid principles are we together the bible says laughter listen when two people are fighting the first thing that disappears is laughter not love love is still there but laughter disappears every time there is restoration it is backed up with laughter when the lord turned again the captivity of zion we were like them that dream and they said among the hidden the lord had turned again their captivity and all of that you know sarah laughed all who hear this will laugh with me the ability to keep men loved the ability to keep men um feel appreciated the ability to keep men valuable is the grandest key to establishing quality relationships when you say this person is likable whether consciously or subconsciously their personality or their training has brought them to a position where they present a disposition to people that make them feel loved everyone on earth is running away from where they are hated to where they are loved and that location can be a human being they can leave you and live with the money they have and live with the access they have to someone else they i'm not talking of flattery and lies by the grace of god we have a large workforce in this ministry i am i am intrigued it never ceases to amaze me the level of commitment and diligence of the workers in this ministry and this is true from my heart truly speaking you see wise people are clapping a politician is clapping because he understands the implication of this but many people that's why you are in in the school of the spirit why do you think in campaigns anybody just says anything and they clap they are not clapping because they understand what was said they know it's a key it's a key to what you will go home with it's a key to what you might lose never allow your life be the reason for someone's tears and misery at least not with your consciousness there are some of us who have an ugly disposition towards people this lady is so ugly you are just seeing the person for the first time and you're acting that way this lady is so slim this lady is so plumpy this lady is not she can't even speak english she's not my class i show you the person who will pay for everything by himself because years to come you will open the office you are trusting for help and see the the victim of your mockery seated with the biro that can change your life and say the door you came with follow it and go out on wise decisions some of our parents made those decisions and they are still paying for it till today cheap opportunities that they would have reason these are laws they will never be bent they will never change i came from a background where we were told that when you relate with people of influence it affects your spiritual life and for a very long time i worked in that foolishness until i understood the kingdom now i'm a friend of every influential person you can be in the world and not be of the world you can be in a system and not be corrupted by the system the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general you touch me two people punish you from the realm of the spirit and the physical realm yeah, for sure there are many well-meaning men of god who have no one to speak for them and they come and collect a land they spend 200 million naira buying the land investing to raise it to its foundation someone comes and put a big x no prayer will change it it remains there the prayer needs a man the angels roam around the earth 
did you apply a law that authorizes us to work? Where is the human vessel we'll speak to? There's no one, but you are a prayer warrior. You see, no truth in the kingdom was designed to replace another. They complement. Are we together now? You have relationships, you don't pray, you will suffer. No spirit talks to any man, nobody helps you. But you can pray, you can fast, you are a, a student of the word, but you don't have strategic connections. Jesus was a man who understood this principle. When it was time for him to get into Jerusalem, he said, go, there's somebody who has a coat. If he asks you, tell him the master has need of it. The man did not refuse. Connections. Are we together now? Jesus had relationships. He had people he could send. Do you know what it means to send 72 people to go and return back with loyalty? David was a great man, ordained to be king, anointed, but his anointing could not help him. He was in a cave called Adullam until relationships came. Certain men came and they vowed. They said, David, we will make sure you are king. What if they were lying to kill him? The Bible says, in the multitude of men is a king's honor. Don't forget that scripture. In the multitude of men, not gold, not silver. In the multitude of men, access to the hearts of men gives you true honor. Access to the hearts of men gives you true honor. Are we together now? Value relationships. Don't lose relationships to look for money. That's, that's not wisdom. Don't lose relationships to look for job, look for opportunity. It's better to lose a job and keep a valuable relationship. Because when everyone in your circle of influence is rising, you will be blessed by association. A message I preached in 2008. That a man can be blessed by association. God called Abraham alone and Lot went with him. How did Lot get blessed? Not by any personal revelation. As God lifted Abraham, he lifted him. Relationships. How did jo Joseph come out of the pit? He, di uh, he, he didn't just have gift enough. Gift alone could not bring him out. There was a relationship he established with a wine presser. It was the wine presser that told the king, I remember my wrongs. Two years ago, there was a man who interpreted my dream. He said, go and fetch him. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. I'd like you to pray in one minute, bless you darlings, and say, Lord, give me the gift of men, strategic alliances, valuable connections that can become keys. Let my life not become a padlock to many. Valuable relationships. Please pray. Lord, let there be a man to speak for me in the days of adversity. Let me not fight alone. Hallelujah. Please sit down. There, a particular man of God was sharing his encounter with Bishop Oyedepo. He used to be a pastor in living faith before he went to start his own work, doing a great work for God. And when he went to his father in the Lord, Bishop Oyedepo, and said that, sir, what one advice will you give me? He said, Bishop Oyedepo told him, the interpre you know, I'm, I'm giving the English interpretation, but he told him in Yoruba, he said, young man, never fight alone. You will not win. Did you hear what he said? Never fight alone. Nobody fights alone. Ask David. David went alone, but he didn't fight alone. He said, you come against me with your spears and all, but I come against you in partnership to a name. Relationship. Every great man knows that his wealth is tied to relationships. When you see a man mysteriously wealthy, people don't say this guy has a brain. They say he has gone somewhere. He fraternized with someone. Let's hurry up. Walk with relationships. And you will be amazed at the doors they will open. Only four people to meeting and accessing any breakthrough you desire. Statistically confirmed. The distance between you and your prayer request is not just a destiny helper away. But statistically speaking, 
somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody that's how naaman was healed a little slave girl who knew a prophet who could take him there and he received his miracle hallelujah law number two take notes if you can get the teachings and listen with all your heart law number two that is part of the success systems of god is the law of value another word is the law of difference you can write the law of value slash difference please write it down the law of value exodus chapter 4 verse 2 exodus chapter 4 verse 2 the law of value the law of value those outside if you're with me shout amen god bless you please make sure that the rain doesn't interrupt you i know that you are not having the best of conditions but trust me what you are hearing now will bail you and cause you to bail others praise the lord the law of value it says and the lord said unto him what is that in thy hand and he said a rod verse 2 and he said cast it on the ground and he cast it on the ground it became a serpent and moses fled before it go to verse 2 that's just verse 2 that's what i wanted and the lord said unto him what is it in your hand and he said a rod it is impossible to be sent on earth with nothing are we together what do you have in your hand that was the weapon that moses used god will always use what is in your hand he will anoint you but the anointing will flow through what is in your hand the anointing needs a physical channel to find expression and the conduit that gives it expression to bless you is what you have in your hands in second kings chapter 4 verse 2 second kings chapter 4 verse 2 a woman was dying they are about to sell her children because her prophet husband had died and could not um they gave the children as a collateral and when she came to the prophet elisha said unto her what shall i do for thee then he says tell me what do you have in your before they received breakthrough they were all asked what do you have in your hand what do you have in your house write this down the law of value states that your value which can be your skill your gift your ability is your difference and creates your rewards your value is your difference and it creates your rewards in the realm of greatness men are rewarded based on their value not based on their needs not based on their desire the idea of something for nothing is nonsense it doesn't exist value your skill your gift your ability which is also your difference now listen a, a wise man dr mike mudok a, a true apostle of wisdom said this he said your similarities decide your comfort but it is your difference that decides your rewards birds of the same birds of the same feather flock together even if they are failing they fail together but when you want to succeed truly speaking there must be your difference another word for that difference is your uniqueness it is your gift that brands you to stand out there are many people in church wallowing in so much ignorance waiting for god to step in and change their lives whereas god is asking them if you will give me the rod my duty is to anoint the rod and cause it to produce supernatural results my duty is to anoint the oil and cause it to multiply beyond your ability when it was time to feed five thousand people nothing produces a harvest of nothing and jesus said look i can't do anything go and look for bread 
he said feed them they said we don't have anything even a year's wages will not be able to cater for them and then andrew found a young boy with five loaves and two fish and he brought it and the bible says jesus lifted it and gave thanks god anoints your gift he does not anoint nothing you have to understand this there are many people angry at god angry at government angry at parents spouses angry with themselves not knowing that the key to any man's breakthrough has been left to him the day you decide to pay attention to the law of value that day you are ready to exit failure you are ready to exit suffering value your value creates your rewards and there are two dimensions to rewards there is a tangible dimension the money now the cars houses all the physical things that come and there is the intangible dimension the fulfillment that you get the satisfaction the peace that is derived write a few points down your value decides who pursues you ah. your value decides who pursues you you know what i mean by value now your gift your skill your ability whether supernatural whether natural if nobody is following you it's because you have not done anything about your value it doesn't mean you are not valuable is that you've not done anything with it because he gave unto one five he gave unto one two he gave unto one one there is nobody with zero nobody with zero your value decides who pursues you and i wrote something down here i says who pursues you decides the magnitude of your reward your reward is dependent on the kind and the quality of men that seek you for your value please learn this many of our parents are angry nobody is seeking them to expect rewards for doing nothing is fraud There are many people who sit down and just wish that things change they get angry at every rich man they get angry at every successful man and they think everyone is diabolic everyone is a crook no no your value sets you apart in the school of greatness your value sets you apart in the school of success please learn this the difference between you and any man you admire is value redefined value refined sorry i meant to say value refined enough to be identified and pursued dr mike mudok said a problem is an invitation for reward the problems around you are god inviting you to come and step to a greater level every time you pray for the throne a goliath will stand before you he who kills goliath is the one who sits on the throne you don't desire the throne without the ability to kill goliath so before he arrives you learn how to kill learn how to kill goliath the king put a price tag three things whoever is able to kill goliath number one he will be he will receive the king's daughter for a wife two he and his family will be exempted from tax Three, he will be given great riches and honor. And David said, that's a deal. Let me teach you a great mystery. Never fight any battle till you know what the reward is. There are foolish battles without rewards. You sweat and kill yourself and at the end you find out there's no reward. Never fight any battle until you know what the reward is. Is God helping us? I teach our school of ministry students... Um, certain things and let me let me just borrow this from one of the um i teach them this under finance until there is a problem that you can solve you are unnecessary write this and let me show you the key to what we call inferiority the key to what we call complex this bitterness and hatred we have towards great people there is nobody that was born to just be following others we decide our destinies until there is a problem that you can solve it is unnecessary 
if you are not sick you don't need Benny Hinn if you are not foolish you don't need Mike Modoc are we together now if you are not sick you don't need a doctor you don't need any furniture work you don't need a carpenter as much as doctors like healing people and ministering health to people the only way they continue eating is when they are sick people oh you have a problem go and lie down while you are lying down the victim the person who brought you goes to the cashier doesn't sit down in the office you go to the cashier you pay am i right please yes the doctor sympathizes with you dear lord the god of heaven will help you but while that is happening you are paying the doctor his salary somewhere is that true i see many things in my life i cannot do for myself and i'm shocked how much i pay for it and i'm surprised and almost um, sad that i will continue to pay for it why do you pay someone in a restaurant you don't have the knowledge or the time to cook so the one who can do the cooking collects the money is that true away with this anger at people there are some of us who watch our loved ones do this resentment for people there are people who see men of god with crowds god has honored them and they are angry so 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 man of god so 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 church it's not all about the crowd do you think people are idiots a man can be stupid but a crowd cannot be stupid are you hearing what i'm saying the bible says where the carcasses are there the eagle will gather eagles are wise people don't just sit down and commit their time to hear nonsense no value discover and develop problem solving abilities write it down discover and develop problem solving abilities every one of us here will succeed to the degree to which we train and build and many times receive the ability to solve problems i am passionate the day i discovered this i made up my mind i would never harass god over my my destiny again because i knew that it was in my hands if nobody is looking for you as a music artist it's a sign that you are not solving problems or you have not made it known i will share other laws if this guy raises a song now it is because that song is ministering to people he never sleeps he never slumbers who is that he solved your problem the song didn't make meaning to you till the day you saw f the song didn't make meaning till three days to your wedding and you still needed 1.2 million all of a sudden you didn't need to hear Kirk Franklin you took Don Juan he never sleeps he never slumbers and all of a sudden you now found out that ah this is why this man is blessed you that you don't need it now does not mean another person does not need it what a time we live in where there is a need for everything everything good or bad there is a need of course we are believers you don't do bad things but i'm saying every good and perfect gift has a need on earth value value everything that constitutes an advantage in your life is a bailout system to get out of mediocrity get out of failure there are people like bishop td jakes uh, I was listening to one of his messages and he says there was a woman who made millions simply because of her fingers. Someone saw her fingers and started spotting the rings. The rings of their designer, the rings that they make. And I mean millions. Everything God gave you is an advantage. Esther got to the throne not just because she was bright. She proved that she was bright later on. Her beauty took her to the throne. It's an advantage. Samson could kill the lion. And all of that is an advantage. Everything in your life. Do not allow men, especially church people, 
to destroy your gift now you must be guided to use it especially sensitive gifts there are gifts that are very sensitive and if not guided you will lose your work with God just to get money however there is nothing God gave you that is for waste are we together now thank you your destinies are the mercy of the discovery and the development of your problem-solving abilities be a master at providing solutions and you will never be ignored be a master at providing solutions and I guarantee you, you will never be ignored at best you will be criticized by ignorant people and those who are intimidated by you and what you represent but not to be ignored be a master at solving something you must solve a problem don't sit down and roam around getting angry and hoping one day one day it go better that's a wise saying that has never worked for anybody the best way to predict your future is to create it don't sit down and wish and hope and wait you stand up and create it there are people who see men of god and the privilege of the blessings that he has brought the influence the prosperity and all of that and people get angry you know people just look at a man of god and say if a man of god is preaching the gospel and then you are this blessed you see if you are ignorant just keep it to yourself so that it's easy for god to help when you spread it you implicate yourself the more the bible says even a fool when he's silent is regarded wise there is no man of god who is blessed because he's preaching every man of god is blessed because he's providing supernatural solutions are you hearing what i'm saying they are spiritual in their context but they are supernatural now you see god's reward system is such that whether you sell your value or give it free for as long as there is a dispensing of value you must be rewarded that's why a preacher will not charge you for anything yet god will reward him i will never beg for bread it's not pride it's the truth because for as long as there is one sinner to be saved for as long as there is one sick body to be healed for as long as there is one mind to be transformed for as long as there is one person desire of us of an encounter i remain valuable that's why the bible says when you see darkness covering the earth rejoice your light has come it's time for you to shine the presence of darkness is proof that you are an endangered species and nobody will push you out like that say i am valuable shout it i am valuable say in the name of Jesus from today I take responsibility and I create a desirable future by solving problems every job advertisement is a declaration of need by that company we need a secretary what they are trying to tell you is that we have seen a deficiency in our services we need to outsource intelligence whoever can qualify for that receives the job is that true you must be valuable let me give you a key master one thing first you see this issue of deception i am highly multi-talented which of them has brought bread to your table i'm not i don't argue that there are many arrogant people moving around saying i'm multi-talented say what can you do you say it depends on what you want i can do everything growing up i found out i can sing i can do this you see people what do you do you say anything you sell water excellently i mean i mean i are you in real estate yes i am are you in this i am i make hair too i can cook you know you see a restaurant one side is carpentry one side they are selling food another side they are selling drugs and selling gin and selling all kinds of things you must be specific your value brands you it helps everybody know when to need you there is nobody you see who does only what they are known for but like the door to a house every house has what you call a master door everybody say a master door it is the master door that gives you access to other doors if the master door is closed you cannot access the door to the kitchen you can't access the door to the toilet so there are other potentials but there is one that will bring you to notoriety are we together now learn this don't just tell people i can do everything and then it means i don't need you I don't need you if I want to sing 
I need the worship team. If our sound is bad, it's yours begging the technical. Help us. If we need order, we need the protocol department. If we need media capture and then following with our social media platforms, we need the media department. Any department we don't need has not been created in this ministry. The day the need arises, we create it. Just like you. You roam around and there's nothing to draw men to you. When Jesus showed up, the Bible says in the book of Mark, 1, 2, 3, when you read, it said, all men seek for thee. All men seek for thee. They don't seek you just because they love you. The world is full of people who also want to achieve their goals. Whoever is valuable becomes the center of attraction. Miles Munro, Dr. Miles Munro gave us a very beautiful analogy and this is how he put it. He said, during, um, now let me use it in our context, Nigerians, when it is rainy season, everybody starts looking at a mango tree, happy and expectant. The same mango tree you will sit under and gist for hours and argue and not even know the color and look at everything. But the moment it is rainy season and the mango fruit start coming out. Are we together? People come and they can climb trees and do everything. You know, I had to cut the mango tree at my place because in the night there were all kinds of things. You would hear someone walking literally just climb the tree and trying to catch the ones that were trapped you know and all of that early in the morning five o'clock god is my witness you hear people running once it rains or wind shakes the place in like 10 minutes somebody's around with pocket fighting and i said no i can't continue so i took away that value from that environment and naturally the people went somewhere else listen this is how nations attract attention they come up with policies that create problems then when it creates problems, you come and meet them and say, I thought I told you, let's negotiate. And you refused. Now there is a problem and you need us. Here are the terms. May you be so valuable that no price pays on you becomes too much. That you are so valuable. Be as valuable as oil. Look at oil during scarcity. When you want to put fuel, gas, you are on the queue it is your money yet you are still begging somebody helps you to pass and you say thank you sir yet you paid that's called value that you are so valuable that people bless you and call it a privilege are we together now i aspire as a person to be so valuable to the body serving the purposes of the kingdom within the the dimension of the grace and calling he has given me that no level of physical and spiritual reward it is my desire that nobody will ever bless me one day thinking he did me a favor value value somebody sowed a seed into my life one time and in two days something dramatic happened in his life and he called me say apostle i have another one i said that's it it's not that i need the seed but i said you see that nobody leaves what works human beings are not stupid when people change for from um, they change formulas and all of that is because it's not working the day you shake hands with somebody how are you sir and he says good morning and from that day people come and queue in his shop the day you are passing say bros come now i have free your god for you because he has identified like um obededom that something was introduced to his environment that brought him an advantage the law of value I learned this law it changed my life by the privilege of God's grace this is what is helping us as a ministry the more valuable we become to the purposes of God the agenda of God and the needs of men the more we continue to rise a day will come when we will wave the flags of nations tens and hundreds of nations why because our value would have extended to those territories they will come yes they will come for as long as there is sickness in the world they will come for as long as there is oppression they will come people flow from the realm of ignorance to where there is knowledge pray one prayer as we continue lord whatever has made men ignore me whatever has made my helpers ignore me i receive grace to work on myself don't just blame the devil and keep insulting people 
my father didn't do this my mother didn't do this outside inside online pray make me valuable make me valuable so valuable in the area of designs make me valuable as a tailor let me not be a tailor that is when every other professional tailor rejects then they come to me as a caterer let me be so exceptional as a businessman let me be so exceptional as a student let me be so exceptional let my education center let my school be so exceptional that men will want to come there to identify with it let the anointing on my life be so exceptional that gentiles will run to that light and their kings to the brightness of my rising lord let me have something to give my generation i'm tired of escorting people i'm tired of competition pray i'm tired of hating people and blaming people there is something you have put within my spirit that can give me a place among the great there is a place you have put upon my spirit that can compel the loyalty of my helpers give me grace to be valuable grace to be valuable hallelujah are you learning something never forget this your reward is tied to your value your reward listen we were not designed to live off miracles a miracle is a sign that something went wrong and God is stepping supernaturally. We were designed to live by principles. Principles. A miracle is God's intervention. But you cannot, you can get miracle money. But you don't, you don't live with miracle money. You live with principles. You can get the act of God's mercy step into your life in a season. But if you want to be great, it has to be by laws. Are you getting blessed? The Lord is leading us. He's helping us. You may look weak now, but take what I'm saying seriously and watch your life grows. Follow these laws and you watch your desires follow you. Like the animals came helplessly to the ark of Noah. You may not believe me, but believe the truths I'm teaching. Hallelujah. The third law that I want to teach you, connecting with the second law now, wherever we can stop tonight there's a lot to cover is the law of competence and excellence the law of value talks of recognition of what you have but the law of excellence competence and excellence the fourth law that governs God's success systems please listen carefully Proverbs 22 29 please give it to us media very fast the law of competence everybody say competence say excellence one more time say competence say excellence now if you're a believer read that scripture projected let's read together one two read seest thou a man aha uh -huh, diligent in his business he shall stand before kings he shall not stand before mean men no specific person no specific person seest thou a man not the man any man any man who chooses to assume this posture of diligence that produces competence produces excellence remember we define terminologies excellence is maintaining is is the highest producing the highest quality at your level excellence producing the highest quality at your level Excellence means to surpass ordinary standards. I read a book years ago called The Enemy, An Enemy Called Average by John Mason. I think that was 2005 or so. And that book changed my life forever. Because you see, many of us, especially Africans, were born in this lifestyle of mediocrity. And when we give our lives to Christ, sometimes if not correctly taught 
we think that what we have come into is a license and an excuse for mediocrity mediocrity means living in a common realm having no passion for surpassing the ordinary there is nothing mediocre that eventually becomes great it may not be bad but it will not bring you to greatness the law of competence write this down competence and excellence are magnets competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources competence and excellence are magnets attracting people attracting opportunities attracting resources we're on our way to better days you see us sing this song we're on our way to better days it's not just a special number it's the truth we're on our way to better days have you learned to use that magnet called excellence discovering your potentials obeying the law of value is a good start but in itself will not activate success systems in your life it is value that is excellently dispensed value that is communicated with competence what is competence thoroughness predictability of results there are many anointed people who are not competent competence in anything there are business people who are not competent there are students who are not competent there are workers who are not competent your certificate gives you a job your competence promotes you your certificate gives you a job and that's where it stops it is competence that promotes you every time a company is about to be downsized who do you think are the ones that they send away the ones that the company perceives to be less valuable in terms of competence discovery is important but development qualifies you to sit with the great discovery is important but development refining is what qualifies you to sit with the great you don't sit at the seat of greatness simply because you discovered your potentials that is important but alongside the law of value knowing your difference is not alone enough building your difference to a point that is worthy of reward is what we are talking about um someone was over i think he was the head of department uh, media he was over at my place and um you know he was served a very sumptuous very very sumptuous meal and you know i was just watching him serving himself and helping himself adding this adding that adding chicken adding fish adding this and i was watching him and then i told him i said if this were a restaurant how much will you pay and then he looked i i, I was just reminiscing on my teaching tonight listen please help me with this how much is this 20 naira let's say 100 naira let's use a round figure this is 100 naira will you pay 1000 naira for this i'm not talking of free will donation will you go to a shop and pay 1000 why what will you say if i sell this 1000 to you it's too much because you feel that this is valuable but not to that degree is that true if your school fees is 30,000 you may not complain even if you complain you may just pay it there is no school that has if you go take your child to a school and they tell you that school is 100 naira will you admit your child there I know you are crying recession but you carry your heart and child except if you just got somebody from the street but you took your child how much is the school fees and you're about bringing out your checkbook and no, no no sir it's 100 naira 100 naira for what for the entire three three um, um what they call them three terms first term second term third term say that's how we are in this school automatically 
You already know what is going to happen to the destiny of your child. There are times that the prices of things are high, but we are happy paying for them. Because we know that there has been development to a level that will commensurately pay you. Is that true? Yes. Competence. Reject mediocrity. Write it down. I reject mediocrity. You have to write it. Personalize it. Don't say we reject. This is not a corporate thing. You must reject it personally. There are many believers who are not competent. Apostle, I make hair. Pray for my, my, um, my, what, what they call, my salon. Someone comes to your salon, you burn their hair. You charge high. You finish late. You are frowning. Heat is killing them there. And close to, close to the, um, the television is one bottle of anointing oil there. Very dirty, dusty around dirty place the gutter is smelling there's a bottle of minerals close to that gutter and you say please pay 100 naira for it and the person says what what is your idea of me just because i came to spend three hours to make my hair praise god people have traveled from region to region to go somewhere and be able to buy certain things because they are looking for quality let me tell you not everyone is afraid of quality there are people who have conquered price what they are looking for is quality did you hear what i said yes oh but if i put quality everybody around my area cannot pay for it you don't need everybody one person can equal 200 mediocre one person who likes you pastor david biome was sharing and saying that he noticed that the, those who sold his clothes, they will collect measurement of 11 and sold 13. He said they, they will never return back to him again. But then one, they would sew three clothes, the same measurement. One would look as if, you know, and then the other one, he said, what sort of people are you? You are not competent. And some of them were members of his church. He said, no, I love you, but I can't use you. Then he found somebody who charged twice the price. And he looked at the person. And he said, why are you charging twice the price? And the person says, sir, I know what I can deliver, according to him. And he says, okay, I'm impressed. Let me give you a trial. He said, when he came back with that clothes, David Ibiome said, that's it. You are the one who will sow my traditionals. Now, one David Ibiome is worth some cities. I think I like that kind of business. Why labor to get two, two, two naira from everybody when I can get one million from one loyal person? Don't allow environment make you compromise on quality. Because impressions, impressions, impressions are important. You give a negative impression about your shop. The day you change, people will still think you are like yesterday. You now went for a three months tailoring school. And now you have become a pro tailor. But everybody looks at you and says, don't waste your time going to that woman do you know god is my witness i once saw a wedding cloth ejimi wedding a lady's wedding gown i never would believe they sold that thing in nigeria i thought it was maybe you know london school of tailoring or one of these um gucci or versace and all of that and they told me a, the tailor made a tailor in the north here i mean with with a level of precision now those people are not noisemakers you may not see them on facebook but they are the types if you call them they don't even pick your call if you are ready to spend five hundred thousand on a wedding gown get to them in a year they, they sow for 100 people only they are building estates and other people are there saying say it depends on your level which type if you want for ten thousand i can sow and then a night to the wedding that's when they bring it and it's raining you can't wash it they bring a white wedding gown that is smelling fabric is bad is torn they said you know they, you didn't finish paying yourself you you spoil another person's wedding simply because of incompetence and he said please if you know any other person bring no no nobody does that listen excellence is self-marketing excellence is self-marketing being 
excellent to one person is the same as attracting 100 people. The money you will use to attract 100 people can be saved in creating an excellent outcome. Everybody say excellence. Look at me. There are many of us right now. What you are writing on, what you are writing on, is a piece of paper that you could not even tear orderly. That is a piece of paper is an issue. But the discipline to just tear it and create synergy. You don't have that patience. You just tear everything. And you are writing something that will change your destiny. You are not excellent. You see, excellence is a culture. It starts from your life. You don't try to pretend it outside you eat, you don't wash the plate. You are not excellent. You wash the plate, you don't throw away the dirty water. You are not excellent. You use the same soap to bath, wash, clean, mop, or the same rag, your sponge case for your shoe. You are not excellent. Are we together? Don't laugh at anybody. God is speaking to you. You enter to bath like I was teaching school of ministry students. Some of you bath in one minute. You, they ask you a question. You are answering it while you are bathing. You will think you are flushing the toilet. You just hear, Shah, and you are out. No, you are not excellent. Sir, you are not excellent. Are we together? Wearing one boxer for two weeks, you are not excellent. Wearing one torn singlet, smelling it to see if it's still usable, you are not excellent. Ironing clothes with sweat on it and seeing it rise and you are, you are not excellent. Are we together? You are laughing. Ask those who this thing has cost them so much. Do you know just there are people someone like me i eat emotionally before my mouth touches it presentation matters as much as what it is you don't cook nonsense and say the most important thing is your body no why did god give me eyes <laughs> are we together now you have a restaurant i carry your spoon somebody took gary with the spoon and you obviously they were washing it in a hurry and you see the trace why should i remain there let's tell ourselves the truth tonight success systems there's oil all around. They have to call you, Madam, come and clean this table now. You just send one lady who frowns around, comes out as if everybody has offended her, just pushes the rag across the table. <laughs> Pours the water on you and goes. Madam, give me rice, beans, towel, and one other part. She goes to go and bring swallow. No attention to details. After 20 or I'm showing us little things. No attention to details. Iron someone's cloth. You go and burn the cloth. You don't know how much the cloth is. I say, sir, uh, I, I decided. I, I remember one guy who wanted me to start um, doing dry cleaning with him. And so he said he wanted to do so. I said, okay, let me try you. I gave him a suit. He returned it after like one month. I don't know what he did on it. I said, thank you. I gave it to somebody and I knew that even him, he knew that he had lost that opportunity forever. Let's stop saying God is not looking down on us. I'm showing you how God comes but we cannot receive because we don't understand his systems. One day, I will cook for the governor. Who are you? With what you are doing now? You are not training yourself. The governor is not an idiot. The government house is not a zoo. If you want to cook well, you must be competent. Don't throw anything at anybody. Are we together now? How about Babas? How about Babas? How about Babas? There are people who pay as much as four, or 5,000 just to bob their hair. You think they are lavishing money. They are not ready to risk their hair. Are we together? You bring out a clipper. You don't even know whether it's sharp or not. You injure someone. All around because you are babbing. Don't don't love these are ways that anything can take you to the top if it's excellent. It's not just shell, 
it's not just oil and gas it's a determination to be thorough pay attention to details listen to the instructions no assumption you met somebody god is introducing a great businessman to you about to take a risk with you he says call me by 2 p.m tomorrow it's by 1 30 you sleep are you a serious person you get up and start ringing his phone by four i say no you have to pray apostle this guy is not picking my my call why should he pick your call maybe that guy is in church for evening service maybe he's a deacon you are ringing by seven you are ringing his number he told you call me by two someone tells you i want to give you a job i want to help you come by two you stroll carelessly by 2 30 and say uncle just to let you know i'm around you know you won't get the job because some jobs are the lives of people are dependent on it excellence you have one shoe you polish it you comb your hair well don't dress around like a thief going to the house of god you look smart say i'm not i'm not a man of god it doesn't mean you should be like that you are smart it's not about having money excellence your notebooks you bind them well if they are torn you fix them you fix your bible are we together now your environment is neat very neat we come into your kitchen we see it neat we come into your toilet we see it neat we come into the living room we see it neat that's excellence don't say we were not trained that way that's why god is bringing you koinonia is a school and you are learning are we together is god helping us the law of competence how to be competent quickly now that i've challenged your mediocrity how do i become competent number one you must have a reference you cannot be excellent and competent when there is no reference a reference means an individual that reflects your aspiration there must be someone even if you plan to surpass that level there must be a reference oh i want to become a great worship minister i have a reference like don moen now that gives you a standard to start climbing the ladder when you become like don moen you now earn the right to go higher but not when you are down I want to be great like who i'm unique oh yes you are unique but you need a reference the bible said ask for the ancient parts that means someone walked in it before you are you hearing what i'm saying now you must have a reference look at me hold on mike if you do not have a reference for ministry for business you want to become a great man of god like who who represents a model because that's the life you are going to understudy that's going to be your case study i want to become a business mogul like who you just mentioned one hilarious name how many videos of that person do you have have you ever gone for a seminar organized by that person no competence and excellence is based on a reference i always challenge every department in this ministry to have a modern ministry whose whose um whose who reflect their aspiration so every department has a reference that they can look up to for inspiration references are important because we draw inspiration from them If your reference is small your outcomes will be small you see when your references are people of mediocrity you will hit it too fast even when you don't do much and so you will not aspire to rise number two how to be competent submit yourself to mentorship now that you have references i told you last week that mentorship and training is the only way to be successful trust me when i say this mentorship is not listening to a man mentorship is submitting yourself to build the character 
the traits the habits the principles and the secrets of a man submitting yourself to build the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets i take it again the character the traits the habits the principles the secrets of a man that's what you do when you are when you are receiving mentorship it's not just to go and package yourself for nothing no you sit down why is this person getting these results what is he doing that i'm not doing why does benny Hinn stand on stage and 40 people rise up on the wheelchair and he has not started praying is it that god is unfair to me god you called me to have the healing anointing but what is it about what's the difference between me and benny Hinn? then you study his prayer life you may never have that close access to him so you take advantage of his materials you know a lot of people call me and say sir i want you to mentor me can i be calling you anytime i say no he says so how do you mentor me i said that's why i'm teaching i'm teaching all the time there's koinonia radio our teachings are free listen they say i have it i say that's why you will never learn mentorship is not listening to a radio program or a tv program i've shared with a school of ministry students there are times it takes me three days to watch a one hour video three days to watch a one hour video because almost every two two minutes i'm stopping this man said this i have to listen that's mentorship you submit yourself to read between the lines ah he just said the power of god will touch somebody outside and somebody was shouting how did he know was that the word of knowledge man this guy is powerful that's excitement that's not mentorship there are too many excited people who just see results and don't know the secrets i was told i don't know if it's true or not but i was told one great man of god bishop um, abioye that one time one man said he wanted to you know find out the secret of his prayer life and he said fine let's pray and that they prayed after a long time the guy was yawning he wanted to sleep and then bishop abio told him okay we've given thanks now let's pray and the guy was almost dying <laughs> if that story is true that guy is not wise what do you think the anointing is you think the anointing is a charm even a charm go and ask a herbalist the price for a charm that can throw a man down not giving miracles just push a man against gravity the secret of great men is in their stories pay attention when a great man is giving you examples pay attention when a great man is giving you stories they are trying to bring a principle many people laugh at the stories parables and mysteries enshrined in stories you can see the stories and laugh and be raptured by the humor of the communication and miss out on the meaning of it i'm not against laughing be happy but you must be able to see when others are looking are we together submit yourself to mentorship number three understand believe and live by the principles learned how to be competent one you must have a reference to submit yourself to mentorship three understand believe and live by the principles learned it's not enough to just say i know he told me this understand what you are being taught believe what you are being taught let me tell you something i have discovered something with the body of christ many people who supposedly submit themselves to mentorship don't believe half of what they are being told when you don't believe a man don't ever listen to him for mentorship because you'll be wasting your time you have a right to vet a man and do you believe this don't sit down and you are not complete you are not producing any result and you are there and someone is teaching on the anointing i say no i don't just because he made a mistake with one greek word he said no i have the the modern lexicon or god who who did you get out of a wheelchair whose eye opened that's the summary of this thing we're talking about whose eye opened whose life changed you prophesied on somebody everything was wrong sit down sit down don't just say the person does not have faith you are you are you are, you are messing up if it's not working it's not working sit down 
when i see people who communicate dimensions that are not at work in my life even if i don't exactly understand what they are saying i sit down and try to discern the spirit of what they are saying because sometimes it may be that they are not able to communicate maybe a businessman a smart businessman who is let's say um, he's somebody who is not very he just used street sense but in that street sense he kept acquiring principles now he may be sharing business secrets he may not intelligently articulate it like someone who went to harvard business school will but you can discern the spirit of his communication not to sit down and say Kai, this carpenter now wow but he's the number one carpenter do you know why rich people are coming to him maybe the man every two two months he will package a seed and squeeze it and take it to his reverend that may be his edge while you are listening to him one day in passing he will reveal a secret and say that's my pastor let me tell you something see that man that man is powerful say talk to me say i used to the only thing i used to make before was coffin and then one day he called me prophesied to me now i make bed i even have a timber shed now he did not say it intelligently but you have picked a principle years ago i was in abuja and i took a cab when i took a cab we we're discussing with the driver because sometimes i crack jokes with them say ah oh guy you poor enjoying this ah my chama and abba i'm not enjoying and then he, we're talking about money and then later the man said oh god you know say this money eh that the thing has a spirit and then i started listening to him he said do you know that he tried to build a house in abuja he tried and tried could not build but he said he saved and took the money out of Abuja and in four months he built. I discerned something that guy was saying. He was communicating a deep mystery. But because of his, the barrier in communication. Are we together now? Listen. If you don't have results in your life, you are not a colleague to the person who has results. Sit down. Humble yourself. Believe learn if you don't believe it will not work for you you don't only believe the principle you must believe the communicator are we together now yes. a woman didn't go to school she's taking care of 10 of her children and you are there i am a lawyer i'm a barrister and the madam is saying let me tell you this i flogged my child from age one to seven when my child was in my womb i was anointing my womb with oil now he's not saying you should repeat the anointing discern the mystery of what she was saying she may now tell you that i took one night vigil for all my children before they were born you are now learning secrets you apply the same thing and change any dull head in your life to an intelligent child no matter what the limitations are listen one of the greatest ways of receiving mentorship is observation don't wait for a great man to tell you everything there are people who look and say ah, is this all there are people who have never seen but observe you observe when the power of god is about to come how does he behave observation observation jesus was speaking to them and saying, you can look at the cloud and through observation know that it is rainy season you can learn a lot through observation every time you enter the presence of a great man be observant you see him keeping laws oh somebody disappoints him and he doesn't quarrel the person in public he says okay that's all right we'll go and see oh oh god the poor man now wants to kneel down and says all right let's go you are learning you are the one who quarrels your house help in front of everybody and before you know it they start calling the house help the name you are calling you insult your wife in front of everybody don't mind this useless woman very soon your friend will say that's why he's calling you a useless woman because you are making men reflect what you are communicating principles say i receive grace to be observant say it again i receive grace to be observant and then number four the fourth way to be competent remain connected never disconnect from those who lift you up it's foolishness a time may come in your life you feel you don't need them again in terms of the dynamics of what they are teaching you but that's when great men fall no matter how tall a skyscraper is 
it remains for as long as he's still connected to the ground there's no skyscraper that says i am i am 500 meters into the air i can disconnect no sir are we together yes are you learning let me give us two more laws and then we'll be done is god helping us <laughs> you know look at this let me tell you this if you're a businessman listen twice to what i'm teaching you and everybody's in business i hope you know business is simply solving a problem for an agreed reward it's not wearing suits and sitting in business class business is solving a problem for an agreed reward simple most men think men of god don't know anything about business you know when they look at men of god they just feel we're just daft people you are praying and fasting you don't know anything see see still this pride we are talking about what do you think managing people is what do you think managing resources are what do you think multiplying them is are we together now the law of the mind number what number four am i right five thank you number one is i'm the one teaching listen number one is the law of relationships am i right number two the law of value number three the law of competence and excellence oh that's true how to be competent is part of it number four the law of the mind jesus the law of the mind number one the law of the mind proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 is god helping us as I teach you, you should be seeing the loopholes. What laws you are not keeping that is deactivating the systems of success in your life. 23 verse 7, Proverbs. For as he thinketh in his heart, it's interchange with the word mind, so is he. Not so he will be. As you are thinking, you already are. The Bible creates your... Um, references your physical reality to what is happening in your mind the bible says in proverbs 4 23 guard your heart proverbs 4 23 guard your heart with all diligence it says for from out of it are the issues of life guard it it is a guard your head it is a guard your legs guard your heart you don't cover yourself the worst is you catch cold and mosquitoes can disturb you but you don't protect your mind you will fail in life listen being filled with the holy spirit does not negate the need to transform and build your mind the law of the mind what does it state as it is in your mind so it will be in your life as it is in your mind so it will be in your life trust me your physical reality is a messless reflection of the summation of your understanding your thought patterns as it is in your mind so it will be in your life a great mentor says you become what you think about how true you become what you think about your life is a reflection of your most dominant thoughts your life is a reflection the quality of your life today is a reflection of your understanding about god about life the quality of your life today is a reflection of your paradigms are we getting blessed the mind is a mystery that i want all of us we've had several teachings here on the mind but it's important for you to understand the mind my life changed this law alone changed me like day and night the law of the mind that my the quality of my life today is a reflection of my mind your mind is a miracle your mind is a gold mine it literally is literally is literally is write this down your mind 
is an extraordinarily fertile garden your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden full stop write it down your mind is an extraordinarily fertile garden it will grow any seed planted and watered it will grow any seed that is planted and watered in agri science they teach that there are several kinds of soils i don't know if they've discovered others but as far as i remember they taught loamy soil clay soil what other one sandy soil and every other auxiliary one that comes as a combination of them your mind is in is a perfect garden sustaining the ability to grow any seed that is planted and watered no matter what is planted in your mind if it lands on that soil and you water it and i'll tell you how to water it it must grow unfortunately it does not grow in your mind it grows in your life you plant it in your mind it grows in your life look at your life the summation of everything in your life your finances your peace your understanding your excellence your relationships everything in your life is a sum total of your paradigm it's an uncomfortable truth many people will not want to admit but it's true apostle nothing is working no friends in my life no favor in my life there is an inaccurate understanding or a poor understanding you are sustaining listen your ignorance is a seed you can plant it in your mind and it will bring you a bumper harvest let me tell you what ignorance produces pain frustration disappointment these are all harvests of the seed of ignorance it's rainy season all the time in your mind your mind has no dry season it's rainy season all the time capacity to produce anything there's no barrenness with the mind there's only wrong seeds planted in the mind and i'm standing here only because you made you made a way made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked to see it was over you made a way and we're standing here only because Sing it one more time you made a way when our backs were against the wall and the love to sing it was over you made a way and I'm standing here and I'm standing here only because you made for you move mountains you cause the walls to soar and with your power you put on miracles there is nothing that's impossible I'm standing here only because you made listen the greatest miracle that can happen to you outside of salvation is not the healing of your body listen carefully there are people with no legs who are changing the world there are people with no eyes who are changing the world but there is nobody with an unfruitful mind who can change the world the worst thing that can happen to a man is not his eyes missing not the legs not the mouth there is a scientist i don't know his name who had a a disease that literally crippled him yet he's one of the smartest scientists in the world nothing else in your life is worth crying for till you lose your mind the worst sickness in life is madness not blindness not blindness madness if i give you one billion and i make you mad have i blessed you please talk to me yes there are people who have built empires in fact there's a book like that empires of the mind and it's worth reading very powerful book you have to learn and understand this mystery called the mind 
many believers are not interested like some of you probably are as i'm talking now you're oh mind bring another thing now look you will never be great i'm sharing you with you the principles that i have lived by you have seen the anointing and the grace of god upon my life i'm showing you the other sides to these success systems because many people just think oh these people are just privileged no sir these are systems they make your life and your outcome predictable You never truly rise above your mindset. You never truly rise. Underline the word truly. You never truly rise above your mindset. You may jump above it for a while, but I assure you, you will never truly rise. Your life will only rise to match the level of your mindset, no matter how you manipulate it. Your mindset is what shows the quality of your life i wrote down something here i want you to listen to i don't know if you can have the speed to write it but listen first if you attempt to change your life without changing your mind your mindset will compel behaviors that will force your life to return back and reflect the level of your mind you know how you pull a rubber ring you can pull it and it becomes elastic and you think it will remain like that the moment you push it what happens it returns back that's how many people are if you attempt to change your life change your shoe <laughs> change your suit change your hair change watch change cars and all these mundane things that we use around to prove that you are successful you attempt to change them first without changing your mind your mind will cause them to disappear until your life returns back to the level of your mind see i have seen this thing work too many times have you i've given this example here i believe have you seen someone that you used a dress for one year and people will think you just sold it because the dress is reflecting the quality of your mindset that maintenance culture of excellence reflected on the dress carry it as a gift and give a tongue-talking careless believer who is not prepared to work on their minds give them two weeks you know what you see the shirt will reflect their mind they won't iron it they won't wash it the color will change they won't care it will tear they won't sew it later on you will check and see that they now use it to wash a car two months Hollandis that you spent money to buy you decided to sew it in two months they are using it to wash motorcycle that's the mindset so that person's mindset changed that fabric to come back to the level in my life I've had the privilege by the grace of God to bless people financially usually they come and they tell you sir I have an idea I have this if you only give me this money I will never return back and I look at them and I say what is your idea of success because you think all you need to be great and I'm correcting many of us here right now because there are people about to make that mistake you think all you need is hundred thousand two hundred thousand if it left you it is not your hand that took it away it's your mind that took it away so you must correct something in your mind first before having it back are we together now the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the most difficult person to help the most difficult person to help is the man who is resistant to positive mental transformation the moment you find a man who is resistant to change in terms of mindset you have found a man who has defined himself as being hopeless i have seen great people rise and didn't pay attention to rise first in the mind i've seen people inherit money i've seen people win lottery millions of dollars and their mindsets created behavioral patterns that drove everything away from them having physical things without a transformed mind is like having a jeep without knowing how to drive it's not if you will have accident it's when are we together now 
You can manage to navigate your way, driving nonsense and arrive safely. And then one day you decide to pack passengers and travel. That's the day you die. You see that? And you can die the death of a fool. Listen. Packaging without mental upgrade will lead to frustration. Write it, Nigerians. Packaging without mental upgrade will lead to, I was almost saying like, lead to Nigeria, will lead to frustration. Packaging. You know what we call packaging? Paying attention to the physical form. Now, it is important. Appearance is important. Appearance is the seed for acceptance. So, don't, don't, ignore appearance is important because it is the seed for acceptance joseph had to shave his beard to stand before pharaoh so acceptance is the seed i mean appearance is the seed for acceptance however packaging having physical things around you now listen many of us young people have a very big there's a big mistake we're making everybody wants to buy a car everybody wants to buy a shoe Oh, that great man is wearing Versace, is wearing Gucci, wearing Louis Vuitton. And me too, I want to get all these designers. I want to. And then you now try and save and save and beg and steal and raise money. And then buy the shoe, buy the hair, buy everything. So physically you look. Let me tell you something. A great man and a great name are not the same. If your name is greater than you, you are in trouble. You must rise to get to the level of your name. I will make your name great does not mean you are great. It's, it's a disappointing thing for your name to be greater than you. God makes your name great as an act of mercy so that you can quickly catch up. Are we blessed? The law of the mind. There's too much packaging. Packaging. I know people who years ago, as students, were behaving like bankers. A student will buy a suit of 40,000. A student will not cook. No, 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 no. I don't have that time. I don't, uh, I don't like okra soup. Do you have that option? No. Whoever pays creates the rules. You cannot... Somebody cannot pay and you say, I don't like okra. There are people who try to live a life. You have not built your mind. There are so many people holding briefcases today. Arrogant people. You see them, they move around wearing suits, loitering our streets. You ask them, what do we do? Say, it depends on which, which company. I have five companies. Uh, I'm the CEO of this. What do you do? Well, we are into logistics. What do you mean logistics? Logistics is like saying, I'm studying science. What do you do? I'm into real, real estate. What do you know about real estate? Well, my uncle gave me one land to sell. You are not into real estate. Are we together now? I am this. I'm into that. I'm, I'm, I'm one of, in fact, by the grace of God, it's just that I don't want to talk too loud. I'm one of the top fashion people in this, this town. Who knows you? Who has patronized you? We make too much noise, whereas our results cannot match it. It is better for people to have a low expectation over you and then your results shock them than to make so much noise. I can cook for 1,000 people. Just give me this money. I know what I'm saying. Is it cooking? What is there in cooking? Then the food is smelling smoke all around. Bond the meat. Bond the food. Bond everything. Packaging is good, but have content. Have content. Build your mind. Buy the truth. Buy books. Buy materials. I can spend the whole night teaching on the mind. Focus on changing your mind, brothers and sisters, and I promise you, your life will change. Don't, don't get into this pressure of living a fake life. If all you have today is Gary, take it with honor. Use your 2,000 naira, buy a Bible, buy a book, read, pay for seminars. You are buying the truth. 
you are investing your destiny yes i know you have one trouser the trouser is torn around sew it with honor let them laugh at you a day will come you will own a clothing line all these things somebody just finishes a graduate you are moving around when you are going somewhere you go and change ten thousand naira and um, you have twenty thousand savings you change twenty thousand to five five hundred naira new note and you just go and dash and say well this is part of what god has done now you take look at the fake life social media has helped us to live very fake lives now there are positive aspects of it people snap near cars that are not their own they stand near a plane and snap they do all kinds so you don't even know it's better for you to know where you are so that you can rise there is a way you live a life that is too fake you don't even know that is fake again are we together you go to a house that is not near your house stand in front of the gate just put one leg and snap and then you go around now let me tell you what you, every time you create expectations that are higher than your capacity what you do is that you cause men to expect more from you are we together yes packaging without mental upgrade will always lead to frustration there are many pastors i love them i love the body of christ but you see a lot of people this guy will wear suit you think if you match the ground every wheelchair will stand up wear the suit wear tie wear all kinds of things pocket square all kinds of things bible ipad another book one protocol one for whoever it is that is standing by the side and you hold the mic one scripture you can quote one prayer you can pray man of god i don't know what to do about my finances as well god will attend to your needs look at the answer he's giving no knowledge of the principles of the kingdom yet you are the first to spend all your money so every you go to a meeting like this you come for koinonia stand outside and snap and use it to publicize your church you say come there is an overflowing abundance of people there are four members in your church it's not a thing to laugh at god is going to lift you you see people live all kinds of fake lives you don't know what is true and what is not true you are selling rappers it's all right but you go somewhere to one big boutique and snap yourself and say me in one of my shops you are lying it is the truth that sets free brothers and sisters not everybody dances to a fake life there are people who can see you and say i know you are starting but i'm taking the risk to lift you and support you are we together yes say i receive grace to work on my mind first ladies some of you spend all kinds of hilarious amount on hair on rings on clothes on hands you are creating an impression are you working no well how much is your salary per month it just comes as as a favor opens up doors for me anyhow so why are you living like that a restaurant that everybody there is a ceo you two you enter there number one you have not grown to that level so you don't even know that they don't call people the see with every lifting life teaches you the protocol of that realm when you force yourself into that realm you don't know the protocol of that realm if you have truly gotten to that level let me tell you the justice system of god is such that you will learn the day you can get to a restaurant where it's a buffet you will already know the precepts of that level be careful let me speak to some of us here who are leaders business leaders ministry people be careful as you attempt to lift people don't be so sympathetic about people that you lift them beyond their current level of dealing with god in a bid to help them you will expose them to dimensions they are not prepared for and it will destroy them sometimes you see people crying somebody just comes to you and says ah, i have a crusade eh? money is not coming say really oh yeah bring your account two million god is trying to teach him how to trust you destroy that lecture you gave the guy two million do you know what he's going to say he will arrow he was begging you crying but he will arrogantly stand before his members and say if you have ever doubted that there's oil on my head go and check my bank account now that guy has not learned anything most people will use your help to prove that they had faith they didn't know you helped them 
me i don't pray i don't pray things just happen in my life i'm, I'm like that i mean all this i don't waste my time pray because you, somebody's you have been reaping somebody's seed the day your farm will be open you will see that uh, what they call that thing shifting cultivation that you have to allow a farm for it because you have allowed it bush following what they call all those agri terminologies you have to sit down for years tilling the ground you left for a long time corporate success is good for the organization but dangerous for individuals because you won't know who is really producing the result see they, let, let me let me encourage you everyone especially the workers in this ministry we share our success now i've taught in this ministry the principles of shared dominion if somebody says today apostle you are very anointed we share it i'm not anointed alone there were people who made that possible however be careful lest you hide in the midst of crowd to say we are moving forward are you moving forward that's the danger with things like group work 10 people can do an assignment only two are serious the remaining two will sleep all of them will get nine over ten and the other person will come and say Kai, god is faithful you are not smart you are not learning in the office they give assignments and they come and give everybody bonuses and you are rejoicing yet you are not growing enjoy corporate success but vet yourself to make sure you are an active contributor that your input is in that equation of success how is the mind renewed quickly this is what we can take we we'll just stop here how is the mind renewed we need to learn how to transform the mind number one a recognition transformation starts with a recognition that your old ideas cannot take you to your destiny transformation of the mind starts with a recognition that your old ideas the ideas that are currently resident within your mind are not sufficient to take you to the place of destiny that's the first key a recognition that something i know now is limiting me or something i do not know is limiting me that's the first step whoever can recognize that that is my place of destiny but as it is where i am now cannot take me there leads us to point number two the second key to the renewal of the mind is access to new ideas access to revelation access to useful information you can't think the way you are thinking now and rise as a pastor as a businessman as a career person as a student as a family man as a wife as a mother as a child no your thought process thus far is what brought you where you are so you have to think i look at my life today and i look at it maybe five six seven eight years i look at the things i knew and i'm surprised that i could even rise with that level of knowledge because compared to what i know now i was in total ignorance i probably would have argued then but truly speaking i would say i was in total ignorance understanding the systems of god now i'm in shock that's why i glorify god because i see his mercy all the way There is something you can know that will take your church to the next level there is something koinonia can know now that can open us to a new season see leaders learn this you are a pastor businessman leader whatever you are listening to me your ministry or organization will rise and stop at the level of thinking of the leader are we together it is it is it is a very sincere statement you are a ceo of a group that group will only rise to match your level of understanding and stop there because you are the chief legislator of that organization if i stop growing as a person spiritually intellectually otherwise koinonia will rise to the level of my understanding and stop there we will only be recycling knowledge so whilst god is granting me grace to feed you with truth i myself am a student of higher mantles greater graces uncommon leadership and i mean it on 
common leadership you know sometimes when i sit down and read these books or watch these people i sit down and i try to say my god what constructed their understanding to be this flawless access to new ideas number three repetition of the ideas in your mind until conviction is established the third way to renew your mind is not just to have access to ideas but those ideas must be repeated until conviction is established faith comes by hearing and hearing that you heard it once does not mean you have built conviction there are messages i've listened to more than 1500 times one message god is my witness and i lie not the goal is not just to hear i have understood the principle i wish we had time i would have taught you how the mind works right generally speaking there are two dimensions to the mind there is what we call the conscious mind and what we call the subconscious mind the conscious part of the mind is the area that connects with your senses your physical senses that's where you do your thinking that's where you do your reasoning that's where you do your analysis unfortunately that's not where your behavior comes from that's not where your convictions come from that's where your intention comes from the conscious part of your mind then there is the subconscious part of your mind that's the seat of conviction whatever enters your subconscious mind must manifest in your life so the bible says in genesis chapter 11 right when you read from verse 5 and 6 the bible says god came down nimrod the son of cush gathered a people and said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens let us make a name for ourselves and then the bible says that god said in verse 5 can you give it to us please genesis 11 and verse 5 genesis 11 and verse 5 the bible says that god said there were, he came down to see and the lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded hold on they had not started building they were mobilizing themselves but the bible says god came down to see the city that has already been built once you build it in your mind you build it in your life so says god himself verse 6 and the lord said behold the people is one and they all have one language and this they begin to do listen and now nothing everybody say nothing who is talking here god nothing will be restrained from them not which they intended which they imagined to do it first happens in your mind i saw these days years ago the mental level i am now the physical reality is not yet the reflection tomorrow will tell you my thought process what you are we are enjoying today was yesterday's thinking are you hearing what i'm saying now your family is a reflection of the thinking of your father and mother it's a reflection of the ideas your life now is a reflection of your ideas listen the subconscious mind there's something very powerful about it the subconscious mind does not know the difference between reality and imagination wow it cannot distinguish between what is imagined and what is real in the world of your subconscious mind whether you are looking at this or imagining it it interprets it as real that's why the bible says now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly far above all we ask or because your imagination is a request your imagination is a request you are crying out to your destiny to come so the bible says philippians chapter 4 please give us verse 8 philippians chapter 4 verse 8 <sighs> thank you jesus finally brethren in light of the fact that your destiny is a sum total of your thought pattern he said whatsoever things are what true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise what's the assignment don't just pray 
think on these things think on these things think on these things think on these things brothers and sisters i think on many things when i look at you i think of how you will be not how you are now no that's why there's nobody i look at and conclude over no no matter how you are when i look at you my eyes are seeing your today but my spirit my mind has captured your tomorrow i look at my life today and i've already seen when the nations will come and worship ah. our hearts our prayer is to see the nations worship our desire and our prayer is to sing your praise from the ends of the earth that we'd want mighty voice every tribe and tongue rejoices our hearts and our desires is to see the nations worship no leader enters a future he cannot see son of man what seest thou businessman what seest thou my brother my sister tonight what do you see i see pain in my family i see divorce i see the fact that i've been delayed be careful you are programming your mind to reproduce that hallelujah are we together pray in one minute pray in one minute and say lord change my vision I have allowed life to give me wrong perceptions and I'm programming my life wrongly. Pray, pray. Shalabrakosia. We'll soon stop, but I want you to get this law. It's important what you see, your perception. He looked at a weak man Gideon and he said I see a mighty man of value brothers and sisters since I was nothing and I didn't have anything I saw a great destiny that's what I see I know what I see in the glory and the power I see miracles that's my life I'm a sign and wonder it's in the glory and the power I see miracles, signs and wonders. ago years ago i would go to our boys quarters in the night alone i never knew my mother was watching me i would get a stick and i was seeing these days i was preaching i would stand i would just go imaginary in the air and say in the name of jesus rise up from the wheelchair that's what i was doing and i would feel the anointing because you see your the holy spirit works through your mind I told you your mind doesn't care whether it's imagination or not job said the thing i feared most came upon me i thought about it accident accident until a car killed me all i see is a great destiny that's what i see for myself all i see is koinonia rising from glory to glory i never see bomb blast i never see trouble i see myself as a leader over men of influence i have never seen impossibility in my life and i'm not just i'm not joking i said this when i could not buy a shoe it's in the glory 
and the power I see miracles signs and wonders I mean the glory and the power I'm a living miracle and a sign on yourself many of these said why do the heathens rage and the people imagine a vain thing that's why they execute it you imagine a vain thing you imagine failure i am nothing i graduated with third class can anything good come out of nazareth i can't speak well i am too old oh come on now oh come on now we're talking about the god of heaven the one who can change people. Listen. Listen. Someone asked me one day. And said, Apostle. God has blessed you so much. With gifted people. How do you get them? And I told him, I see them. I see a service conducted by music ministers. Who as individuals are international figures. You have been allowing the devil plant nonsense in your mind. There are ladies here. Whereas there is Esther in you. Vashti is calling you. Your destiny is calling you. But your yesterday is pulling you back. Remember you failed. You failed jam five times. What is the definition of a failure? Then you submit to it. The moment you submit to it, you destroy yourself. Listen. Listen. Every great man is a man who changed his mind. Literally. Right from the time I was having bread. Bread. I will, I will cut the bread and put granite in the middle. I knew that a day will come I will feed nations. Ask Ejimi. We had a song. Ask and I'll give the nations to you. Oh Lord. That was our song. That's the cry of my heart. Distant shores and the islands will sing your God as it rises on access to the heart of kings i saw myself i knew that there was an anointing every apostle was connected to kings i found it from scripture and i said no there is a mantle upon my life there are people here from our first crusades we will go and greet kings go and greet the kings in the land it was a seed listen tomorrow will never appear till you call it you will call it your mind is a fruitful part of your destiny the holy spirit is crippled if your mind says yes no demon can say no believe me hallelujah listen the lord gave me a very great testimony i think it was day before yesterday or yesterday something happened and um it's something I had seen in my spirit, I had seen in my mind. And I would not see it physically. And then the Lord gave me a very big miracle. When it manifested and I looked at it, it was exactly what I had seen in the spirit. And I said, this God, believe him. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to teach you the law of faith. I thought we would have more time. There are many laws to teach you. Brothers and sisters, when you activate these things, by next week when we are done i'm going to spend the night before next week praying all the oils that will be used i will lie down and pray on it when we are done that oil as it comes on your head you will activate systems my my listen 
my brother my sister it will shock you this life you see this life you see is a living miracle is a product of understanding this is what dominion is it's not guesswork I saw myself walking in the anointing I saw it I saw shadows killing the sick I saw it it's not some vain nonsense imagination I believe it the only audience in my vision yet I pulled it down and it will cause nations to see it you are the first to live in your future and then I speak it Lord it will happen I will stand before kings they will come Gentiles I saw a ministry that was zero zero debt zero debt owing no man nothing as a ministry dead or alive I saw it where did the money come from your mind there is nobody giving any guarantee anywhere there are people frowning my uncle didn't give me tenure and nobody's uncle promises him anything leave all those dependence careless dependence everything comes from above it comes through men not from men from God through men to you men are not your source they are channels it comes from God we are going to pray is someone angry are you seeing how you have authorized I've only taught you four laws some of you have missed it in relationships some of you have missed it your gift is not speaking some of you mediocrity just these four laws alone are enough to open your destiny see God instructed me to teach you this series because God wants to roll away shame. Shame. He has taken all the pain. You've taken all the lamentation. You've taken all the disappointment. You've taken all my sorrow. You have taken all my sadness. You've taken all limitations. You've taken all the pain. of your family members would have been had they known these laws they destroyed relationships and it has grounded them some of them the last time they worked was 1997 no door open till today sincere well-meaning believers but they have not understood the systems of the kingdom nobody is born with understanding you buy the truth I want you to lift your voice and prophesy I found my way I found my way I found my way. I found my way out of misery.
Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. Lord, I begin to live my life from the standpoint of these laws. I engage them. I receive grace. Lift your voice and pray. Grace. Grace to engage these laws. Grace to engage these laws. Yes, Lord. You are taking me from glory to glory. Are you not the Lord of all flesh? You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should bear. Hallelujah. You know that song, right? That Nathaniel Bassi song. Just sing it once. I want us to sing it. Let the devil know that we're singers. the anointing because we have been taught that the anointing is for men of God and since I'm not being called into the fivefold ministry I do not need the anointing no brothers and sisters hear me the anointing the anointing I've said it again I want it to become a revelation in you that the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference the difference between a man who rises out of death and out of every challenge is the anointing a thriving ministry and a struggling one the anointing a thriving career and a struggling one the anointing the anointing will be the difference between your next level and where you are now don't trivialize it don't say it is unnecessary no the anointing is God's advantage in the life of the believer it truly is an advantage I think it was the last set of school of ministry students i was teaching them when we we're doing pneumatology i was teaching them about the anointing and i said this is our wicked world people ask you who is your father he's an iron bender who is your mother she sells a car somewhere in the road no you cannot rise we are victims of the wickedness the sentiments the ethno-religious biases of men in a world where people want you to bring something you need the advantage not an advantage brothers and sisters the anointing can take you where anything can take anybody the anointing others may get there because of their connections others may get there because uncle so 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 went and once you are there they ask you how did you come and then you laugh God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me is God's ability God's ability is working in me is working in me is working in me is working in me 
supernatural results you've heard me say it if it is the Lord's doing then it must be marvelous in our eyes if it is a man's doing it is natural and logical but brothers and sisters when your result defies the natural progression there is another agency other than you when your results in any area of life listen they called Jesus. They said he was casting out devils by Beelzebub. He said, if I use Beelzebub, the prince of demons, by whom do your fathers? Their fathers were casting out devils. They fraternized with the realm of the spirit, accessed powers higher than a human power, and were producing results. That statement shows that no man can do supernatural things without the assistance of a dimension higher than that which you know. Yes. Yes. In this day and age, brothers and sisters, the world is waiting for supernatural outcomes. You don't just tell somebody be healed. That's arrogance without the anointing. Now, let me show you something. I've taught you this again and again, but I feel like doing it. Let me use a thousand naira if you would permit me, please. Look at this. Because so many people really do not understand the operation of the anointing. I want you to learn this, please. By the grace of God and by the privilege of His grace, I can tell you I understand the workings of the anointing. I want you to pay attention and listen closely. I may not boast of any other thing, but I can tell you I understand how this thing works. Listen, the anointing works like money. Watch this. If I give you, Ejimi, 1,000 Naira, do you know that there are many things this can buy? 1,000 Naira can buy this, but 1,000 Naira cannot buy a car. Are we together now so when if your desire is to buy a car you need multiples of 1,000 it is good that you have 1,000 but it is not sufficient to draw to your life the result this is how the anointing is don't say I'm anointed it must be to the level that is capable I thought this thing is energy physics defines power as work done per unit time that's the definition of the anointing God's ability that is dissipated by unit time to produce supernatural results that's the anointing listen if I try to lift this it doesn't mean I don't have energy it means the energy dissipated per unit time is small so I need another agency to assist me is that true believers this is how it is so it is not that the name of Jesus is there is not working it is not that the anointing is not working the situation that you are confronted with this is why grace and peace is multiplied because there are situations that defy that current level so he says grace and peace be multiplied to you why is it multiplied how God anointed Jesus Acts 10 30 look at the extent to which he anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power let me show you how to be a blessing when you contend with the spirit to carry a dimension of grace and unction sufficient to solve most if not all the problems that you will find this is how you'll be a blessing if Dangote comes here now and decides to give everybody one one million how, do you, how many of you know that's not a prayer point for him? Because it is within his capacity. Are we together? If Koinonia decides to give everybody here one, one million, we'll have a problem somewhere. Correct? Not because we don't have money. It is the limit of our capacity. So it's not when, when this guy has a problem. It's like a shop. There is a dimension of anointing required to solve it. So when you come to help him, it's not just that you laid hands, he may even fall down. But the money is short. What do you need? More. More. More of the same thing. Not more of a different thing. More of what? The same thing. 
so Benny Hinn can climb the stage and he's not even held the mic and 40 people rise out of the wheelchair you see that the anointing upon his life makes him see clearer the might and the possibilities of God when you are not heavily anointed you create a wrong picture of God because you struggle for little results and it looks like that's how much God tried to release that result but watch another man who comes with grace and unction and you watch ease as a testimony it's called capacity the anointing makes God look limitless in the affairs of men this is why regardless of the results here and there that God produces we still remain in the secret place because there is more brothers and sisters there are people scattered here tonight if I ask everybody to come and hold the mic people will not travel from end to end there are people following from over 45 nations of the world they are not sitting down and wasting their time no no people want solutions now a man of God gets up here called Joshua Selman I would be a wicked man if I have not stayed with God sufficient enough at least at the level of the growth to be able to partner with the Holy Spirit that's why we cry for his mercy because there are many situations that we need results beyond our current levels of dealings with God and we need the mercy of God to superimpose the current level of grace that we carry that's why sometimes I tell you that God does not heal people just through a man's faith he switches to the covenant that that man has with him and it becomes a platform upon which he reaches men are we together? tonight let me tell you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there is grace to cause your mountains to look like valleys yes yes it doesn't take time it only takes time when an insufficient dimension of the anointing presents it learn this about the anointing the anointing can greatly misrepresent God. It's like a television that is not well tuned. It will make you think the producers were that poor until you take the same video to a clearer HD television. And that's when you watch the artistry of those people. The anointing can misrepresent the capacity of God. Hallelujah. I take time to teach like this because the miracles and all this will not take time once your heart is aligned to receive then you will receive miracles upon miracles are we together this is how he gets glory when he finds men who are heavily anointed please hear me never be caught up by the results you currently have now no matter how great i tell you you ask the lord my work with god is as if i don't have an iota of his anointing in my life there is a standard and there is a capacity that i'm working with god and i seek to get i have seen them in dreams and visions and i did not see this current level we are trusting god for levels where before koinonia starts before the first prayer point half of the people who come sick are already healed completely one woman one of our mothers i met a new mother new wonderful mother in portacourt lovely people those of you from portacourt i know they are listening to me now they are following me lovely lovely woman i love you with all my heart and um, the whole family i mean they are just into this ministry with their heart she donated her car and everything for them to use for the program and she shared a testimony i think it was yesterday that touched me she had been having some kind of respiratory problems and so when they picked me from the airport her children insisted that she would sit down at that same place and that woman said she just sat down and the children drove her home brothers and sisters that was the end of it now listen listen when you understand the anointing there is something interesting about it when you understand the anointing and you are heavily anointed the more heavy you are anointed the will your will plays little role in its release it becomes wherever ask the woman with the issue of blood Jesus did not even listen now he was not planning she just touched him and Jesus said who touched me the anointing didn't say Jesus can I flow no. so you can be in a restaurant you are eating 
and all of a sudden now you will never believe what i'm saying if you are casually anointed if you truly are anointed you become a blessing you greet somebody just shake his hand and that day he has more customers than he can ever imagine now even you you do not know till he tells you an effulgence of spiritual possibilities you your life has become a gateway and a portal revealing a dimension of possibility that is not affordable to the natural man i welcome you tonight to this place where god has chosen by his spirit to reveal the multifaceted dimensions of his grace and glory please rise up on your feet Oh, oh, oh. 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 La 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 ba e na na ba di. I want you to just pray two prayer points from the depth of your heart. Number one, I like you to insist and say, "Lord, I release my faith. There is no challenge I came here with tonight that will return back." Go ahead and pray. Prophesy, declare it. I wave every captivity goodbye. Jesus is Lord. Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hala prakato sete katapanda shabrakada bala. Shikete parato shkaprata skalabasya. Pray. I believe in the mighty God. Dera na na, na na na, shela na. Shikada bala kataprakato shikete. Shepres kete shalabanda katai. I have found David my servant and with my holy oil have I anointed him It's a realm of your glory. It's a realm of your grace. I can see your mighty power moving in this place. We're in the presence of angels with God's glory on their wings, and like the voice of many waters. I can hear the angels sing. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Ta da da. Ta da da da. Ta da da. One last prayer point father take me to a new dimension there is always more lift your voice and pray take me to a new dimension 
take me to a new dimension. Are you praying? Take me to a new level. Let me not need to tell people that I came before your presence. Let there be an evidence. Let there be a testimony. Nina Ka wo ya bo Sarki salama Nina Ka wo ya bo never be the same I want to pray for you listen I want you to trust God please hear me especially for the visitors here I want you to trust God that the forces and the yokes that stand between you and your destiny you have to believe that they will live now are we together? I want you to believe God. There are people already receiving their deliverances and miracles. I want to pray for you now. My heart is heavy because in this season and in this time, God wants to set people free. Some of you may not know the causes of the situations, the challenges, the things you go through. You have prayed, you have fasted. God has brought you here tonight and he will give you a dramatic miracle. Are we together now? Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Jesus, the presence of God is Listen, I want to pray for you. I see a writing. I just see a writing in the realm of the spirit. And I see great breakthrough. This is what I see. Great breakthrough. There is a grace that is coming on people now. The Lord is starting off with us tonight. Bringing strange breakthrough to people. I want to pray now. At the count of three. In the name that is above all names. I decree and declare. In the name of the Lord God whose I am. Right now at the count of three, I release that grace. I command every devil standing on the way to anyone's breakthrough. I command that you leave right now. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout the name Jesus. One, two, three. Go now. Go now. Bring them out. Shake it, take a Inside and outside. Right now, in the name of Jesus, my God, I see deliverances. I 
name of Jesus, I establish victory. Victory, I command it. Break through every force of darkness. Defying the word of the Lord. I place the word of God upon your life. Right now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, my God. I still see these breakthroughs. I'm seeing doors opening in the realm of the spirit. Listen, I'm seeing at least 17 people. 17 people I'm going to pray. And the power of God will come upon you. Strange doors opening right now in the name of Jesus. I declare by the count of three. One, two, three. Open now. Open now. I command it. I declare it now. Now. Open doors. By the Spirit of God. Open doors. Open doors. Support Secretary. My God. Doors opening. Over lives. Opening. Over destinies. Opening. By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. your hands and pray the Lord is showing me people here with strange delays you love God but strange delays I'm seeing like arrows in the spirit and this is not from darkness it will come upon you once it comes upon you know that that delay will end right now in the name of Jesus the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands as I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus Lord where are they men and women who have been delayed strangely right now right now right now I command that light and power that light and power ending delays now mighty in this place Mighty in this place, you are mighty in this place. Mighty in this place, you are mighty in our lives. Mighty in our lives. Mighty. I'm seeing something strange in the spirit coming upon sisters. I'm seeing a strange grace for speed. Just sisters, sisters, I'm seeing this. And the Lord is asking me to prophesy it. As soon as I prophesy it, there is a strange unction coming on ladies for strange speed. I see this in the realm of the spirit. Now, Lord, I place the word of God upon this prophecy. And I declare, ladies, step into speed now. Supernatural speed. Run like Elijah. I command it. I decree it. In the name of Jesus. Strength speed. Strength speed. Strength speed. It's coming on you now. Like the dew of heaven. Coming on you now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the Lord is opening my eyes to a vision now and I'm seeing keys being given to people keys listen keys it will come on you like fire I see keys these keys are solutions and strategies solutions and strategies solutions and strategies you will help me shout that name Jesus again I see keys being handed over to people according to the grace and mercy of God now Lord I pray that even as you have shown me whoever should be a recipient of this spiritual blessing I decree and declare that it will come upon their lives now are you ready at the count of three get ready now my God my God my God one two three take this kids take this kids so break your day. for you but let me just do what the Lord is asking me to do I've told you many of you wonder when you see me do this particular thing where I just mention a state and the Lord begins to touch people from that state it's a sign and wonder you see these things they are operations of the spirit because the Lord is opening my eyes right now I'm seeing a map of Nigeria and I'm seeing the hand of God on south 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 that entire region now now, all those who come from that region, south, 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 a miracle. Now, but don't shake it. Let break the gate to Sumata, Lakata, Praskata, Bashikate. In the name of the Lord Jesus, south, south, the Spirit of the Lord brings breakthrough to men and women. You can't stand it. Breakthrough. Every hand in delay from the south, south. I see the hand of God strong upon men and women strong upon men and women ending captivities by the spirit of the living God hallelujah there is somebody in overflow too you are holding a picture you are holding photos please come overflow too by the roadside let the person come let the person come quickly you are holding a picture the Lord is showing me someone please let let that person whoever he is or she is please quickly you are holding a picture run come you are wearing like blue uh, is it blue or black now who is that come holy holy don't worry mama i'm going to pray for you where is your daughter ma no mike i'm looking at you hold on is this her i'm looking at you and the holy spirit is taking me and i'm in Kano. where is she she's at Kano. where is she that's what i'm saying she's at Kano. and the lord why 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 are you holding her picture have the, up to now she have never got get married uh -uh. and this, this is she's sick this is what i'm saying this is what god wants to destroy because i'm seeing her in Kano, and you are standing in for her yes i'm supposed to pray for those outside but i saw this and the lord is saying i should minister to you go and tell her that the lord brings her life this sickness is over <laughs> hallelujah sir where are you coming from? Me now, Niger State. Niger State. Yes, 
thank the Lord because your car would have had an accident on the way coming and the Lord has brought you deliverance is this your family yes, sir. this is your family yes, sir. one two three four how many children have you stopped giving birth do you think this is all I'm looking in a vision and I'm seeing one more a baby girl after this hold my hand sir but the Lord is going to I'm seeing you have serious problem with finances very serious you are not a lazy man even you you cannot explain how you got into this kind of trouble but I want to pray for you because the Lord is saying I should release you from this hold my hand sir I bring you life in the name of Jesus Christ you will go back and return with a strange this man's life will change like day and night in the name of Jesus Christ mama please come I don't know this woman but I'm asked to pray for you I look at you in the realm of the spirit and I'm seeing two hands like this you're a woman of prayer this is what I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit look at me ma you love God sincerely but many things are going around they are scattered in your life and you have been asking can God come can God step in even when you were there you were praying that prayer I had you praying and the Lord is saying I should tell you he's giving you rest today he's giving you supernatural rest madam please stand up please stand up man please stand up where are you coming from madam it's from Sabongari you are coming hold my hands in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, your life will turn around and that of your family. This is by the Spirit of God, by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Have I prayed for you, darling? Come. In the name of Jesus, I end captivity from your life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I end captivity. Don't worry. I mustn't speak to you. As I lay my hands on you, I want to believe there's someone you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now you are outside your baby is sick run with the person and come now that is sir can i pray for you sir i'm going to pray for you and the lord is going to give you peace and the lord is going to raise people to help you now sincerely speaking i want to be honest with you it is not within my power to stop you from getting married i we generally can only advise because you see let me teach you something especially as a pastor there are people who are following us from 45 nations of the world and when you are ministering sensitive things like this um, they are listening and every territory has laws are we together now things are a bit flexible in Nigeria but if I were in America and I'm talking to this man like this and saying don't marry another wife the son can go and sue me or the ministry so this is the reason why it's not maybe lack of faith are we together sir it is not within my power and i have no right to judge you i can only declare the counsel of god and pray for you um this is very important when you are speaking to people although by the spirit it is important to be wise in your communication so that you do not say things that will bring you serious problem mama you are praying and you are still telling God there is one more thing you want to tell me. I'm hearing your prayers. Come. What is it? Give her the mic. Is that true? You are standing there and you are praying and you are saying you wish that I can call you again. There is one more issue. What is the issue? Marriage and my daughter's. Your daughter's marriage. Uh, ma Mama, let's, let's pray. If that is the issue. You are a good woman. I want to pray for your daughters and God said that's not what you need. Hold it. What you need is destiny help us. Mama, as I'm looking at you now, they're about to throw you out of the house because your rent has expired. Give her the mic. Is that true? Yes. Sir. You need somebody to help you. Yes. Sir. Seriously. Yes, if sir. not, the time will come. Even what to eat will become an issue. The Lord said I should tell you forget this issue of marriage. Hmm? The major issue is the ministry of destiny help us Amen. lord send people Amen. you see we must pray that god will grant us grace so that we can help our mothers it's a terrible thing for a woman at this age to be praying as if she never had a child as if she never trained anybody that's why we cause the spirit of delay that makes people to be established very late now according to scripture a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children but sadly 
being as the situation is we must be able to turn back and be a blessing to these our loved ones a woman like this at her age should not be going around trying to look for food to eat again i pray that your loved ones will not look for food to eat that god himself will empower you and establish you and send you help mama don't cry in the name of jesus christ by the power of the holy spirit the lord will help you by the power of the holy spirit in the name of jesus see me after the service madam in jesus name thank you i pray for you sir in the name of jesus may the lord change your life change your situation right now in the name of jesus you are the one with the child please come we're going to pray for the sick now very quickly what's wrong with him he's running temperature this evening just this evening yes sir. but he has been having persistent cough, cough. cough. let's pray for him lord jesus i pray for this your dear son by the anointing of the holy spirit i decree and declare that this boy be made whole right now and for you his mother i command that everything the devil wants to put in your stomach let it leave you right now in the name of jesus christ i pray please why are they here mama come please stand up the lord is visiting you the lord is saying i should tell you he's taking away reproach and pain amen, amen, from your life amen. this is what he's saying please stand up please stand up man that he's rolling away reproach you see as god speaks to one person he's only using one person as a point of contact to speak to everyone it doesn't mean that we have to call you the time will not let that happen are we together now for instance madam are you from kaduna who is from kaduna uh -uh, uh -uh, not just a person a woman there is a mama from kaduna that i want to speak to now this is a young lady now I, I, a, a mama like elderly woman there's a woman who came here from kaduna not a young lady please i i want to just speak to that person very quickly mommy look at me you have gone through so much pain the lord is saying i should tell you it's your children that will wipe your tears it's your children that will wipe your tears may the lord raise them and may they wipe your tears i pray for you in jesus name why is she here you are the deeper life um, lady you are you are a member of deeper life are you sure hold my hands lord jesus i pray that you do a miracle in her life right now put your hand on your stomach God is taking something away from your stomach now. I curse it. Something is leaving you now as I hold your hands. You are even surprised. Even you, you would not have known that there's something there. I'm seeing like a malignant growth, something that will later develop to a fibroid. I curse it by the God of heaven right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, let it be over now in Jesus' name. Come, my brother. You are James. I will pray for all of you, but you love Jesus. You love Jesus. I have to pray for you. Come. What's your name? Your name is James. Do you love Jesus? I prayed for one boy, one miracle service. Very bad friends. And I'm still seeing it again. I don't know where that guy is. And the Lord is asking that we pray for him again. You see, all these gentlemen, you have to be careful. It's important for us to be serious with God so that you don't land yourself in the police station. Hold my hands. I pray for you. The Lord is bringing restoration to your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural restoration. Sir, I pray for you. You will not, I don't know what is making. I'm seeing a thermometer up and down your chest. And the Lord is saying I should rebuke anything that has to do with your blood pressure. In Jesus' name, I command that it leaves you right now by the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray for all of you. Come, sir. Let me just make contact with you very quickly. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hasana. Hasana. We're going to pray for the sick now. We have to be very fast. Hasana. Hasana. I'm seeing someone with the name Hasana. Is there someone like that? Please, very quickly. Hasana. Whether you're inside, outside. Hasana from Kogi State. Hasana.
Are you not Sado's sister? Is your name Hassana? You are sure? Look at me. The Lord is bringing restoration. Restoration. The Lord is saying I should stretch my hands on you. In the name of Jesus. May you be a benefactor of the mercy of God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy of the living God. The mercy. Yes, it's alright if your names are Hassanah. The mercy of the living God. Your name too? Your name is Hassanah. interested in what I'm saying. Hold my hands, my dear. The Lord is bringing breakthrough to your family. There is a spirit that oppresses you and it must leave you now. Go! Now! In the name of Jesus, I curse you by the God of heaven. Let her go. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> She's afraid already. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. Hold my hands. The light shineth in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. This lady, you see, she's smiling. But there is a serious case. There is a very mad, wild spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a reason why I ask her to hold my hands. This lady has been tormented and oppressed in a way that you cannot imagine. Now I command that spirit. This is koinonia. I curse you by the God of heaven. Be gone now. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus Christ, you would see a gentle lady like this and she would not know what is responsible for her life. This doesn't mean she's a devil. It doesn't mean she's possessed. No. It's just the advantage that Satan takes over the lives of people. I command in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you what is wrong with this lady is not a little issue. This thing doesn't show on the face. So you just see people smiling. But they are victims of a lot of things. Let me pray for you, my dear. Come. Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring you life now. Life, come. The devil wants to bring pain to your life. Hold my hands. I command it to come to an end now. Pain, repeated cycles of tragedies. I curse it by the God of heaven. An anointing is coming upon you and the Lord himself is giving you a supernatural miracle right now. There are three ladies. I just heard the cry of children. And there are three ladies. You are standing in for your families now. As I'm speaking, the anointing of the Holy Spirit is going to come upon them. Standing in for their families. Standing in for their families standing in for their families let the oppression in your family end now this girl's family has gone through all kinds of things this is koinonia i bring you the life and power that is in the name of jesus now this is what we're going to do please listen very carefully um you know that we take out time to minister more specifically to people i wish that we had all the time but we have to work with time and um we are going to pray for the sick now. Please listen. Whether you are inside or outside, if you are trusting God, listen please. Whether you are inside or outside, aside from these particular cases, if you are trusting God for fruitfulness for your loved one or any other person, whether you are inside or outside, please don't come in at random. I want you to come in. I want to minister to you myself. Aside from that, now we are going to pray for the sick. Overflow 1, please all of you should walk to the front of your projector. You will be ministered to. Overflow 2 and the one's extension of overflow 4, please walk to the projector stand outside. Overflow 3, walk to your projector stand outside. Very quickly. And those inside here, I want you to just walk out to me very quickly. We are going to minister to people in that order. There are so many people it has pleased the lord to make this place a place of supernatural miracles please it, it doesn't matter where you stand if you are outside don't come in just move to your projector outside hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord we're going to minister to you now it will be very fast whilst we're doing that please your prayer request 
if you've not written your prayer request or that of your loved ones those online you're yet to write do that quickly so that the ushers can follow and then we'll do that very quickly every other thing from here will now be the prophetic declarations there are so many people inside and outside we are going to pray for the sick the lord has given us the grace he's given us the capacity there are people going through all kinds of things and um, in as much as we teach you how to live in health and wholeness we cannot allow the devil buffet you some of you are standing in for your loved ones some of you are standing here with incurable diseases hiv you've heard the testimonies there is nothing that has not been healed in this house sir the lord is going to heal you you will not die that virus will not kill you you hear what i'm saying i don't mean to embarrass you i hope you are not embarrassed because i look at you if i don't pray for you i'm seeing very soon this thing will eat you up i don't have to say more than that but you know what i'm talking about there is no virus there is no situation that has not been healed in this place and you know we don't announce miracles if they are not medically verified so that it doesn't look like people are just faking things so believe the lord especially if you are here for the first time it doesn't matter who ministers to you i just want you to believe there is a corporate grace that is at work here to minister and bring miracles to people we'll be very fast please those outside you'll be very fast uh pastor jimmy let's see um you handle overflow one outside um pastor alpha overflow two um pastor femi let's see pastor femi and promise go to overflow three mike you walk with a jimmy outside there and then um have i told you where to go to okay so we'll would go in that order i'm sure that i may just walk alone here there are a number of people who are not here we give those opportunities because it's also an opportunity to train and build people please quickly let's go father we agree that the corporate grace you have released upon this house and this family for miracles let it be released regardless of who ministers we minister in the name of jesus we bring that name that is above all names over every situation let your anointing speak this is the moment oh god where you cure the incurable this is the moment where you step into the lives of people let it be a quick walk let everyone here return with testimonies in jesus name i'm going to begin to minister to you but there's one person here the anointing of the spirit will come upon you so strongly that will be the signal of the grace to minister here right now this is the, don't don't mind me i do all my crazy things um, let's just walk by the spirit someone here in front the anointing of the spirit will come on you in such a mighty way the moment that happens then i begin to pray for the sick now thank you jesus for your mighty power that's the person down there so i can pray for you now bless you father thank you all right guys let's give god the very best please you can sit down you can sit down while you are sitting let's be praying because as soon as i'm done praying for the sick we'll address other issues very quickly so that we can finish on time the lord bless you in jesus name Please help them, whether you are an usher or not. New levels. There are people God is fishing out here, new dimensions. Shebros kaparu shabradi salatush. Shabros katabrande gadego shalabradi asha. Engreto susabrigatia. It's a call to your spirit man. It's a call to your spirit man. This is not for everybody. It's a call to your spirit man. If it's your call, you will hear it. 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 You must hear it. If it's your call, you will hear it. Your spirit will pick the signals of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah.
spirit of prophecy is upon that man. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No. ritual is not a ritual no but listen brothers and sisters we bring this prayer request before the God of heaven representing the pain of people representing the mockery of darkness and you've seen all sorts of miracles that has come from here and we're going to pray now the Lord is asking me take off my shoes we are going to pray right now please I want you to participate I take time to explain this so that we all understand um, I may not be able to minister to everybody one by one but this is a representation of the cry and the request of people the other people are ministering to those outside don't worry those outside if they are still ministering to you just hang on those who um, have been ministered to already please just follow your screen can we stretch our hands in one minute and I'd like you to just pray in the spirit pray in the spirit to the God of heaven who answers prayers Jesus Jesus the son of the living God now arise O Lord come to your resting place upon these requests let there be mighty 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 miracles mighty miracles Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit 
that every request here represented tonight is turned into a testimony. It's turned into a testimony. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Every request here, no matter how impossible, is turned into strange and speedy testimonies. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that for every request you have written here and all the ones online I release my faith and in the name of Jesus I declare let this be the last time you will submit this request the last time you will submit this request let this be the last time you will submit this request unto him that answers prayers the one who has beckoned on us to approach his throne without fear to approach with boldness and confidence we decree and declare in the name of jesus most high the son of the living god every request here i say again is turned into a testimony in the name of jesus turned into a testimony by the power of the holy spirit turned into a testimony by the power of the holy spirit turned into a testimony hallelujah this is the last phase of the meeting i want to pray and prophesy upon your life it will never tire me to say this in my opinion the greatest part of this service is what is about to happen now because believers are used to charismatism falling down rolling and so on and so forth we many times downplay the place of prophecy prophecy is very powerful and have taught us that there are two dimensions to the operation of the prophetic there is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic that god allows by his spirit to bring comfort to bring access to light and information that works hand in hand with the gift of the word of knowledge but the greater and more superior dimension of the prophetic is the creative dimension of prophecy where the word of god makes realities that have no business happening to happen the word creates a scene and adds it to the pages of your life so that something you had no business walking in you will all of a sudden find yourself walking in it and remember i told us the last discussion before we began to pray that one of the greatest reasons why people are limited is because of inadequate dimension of the anointing so alongside this prayer i'm going to be praying a prayer of impartation there are people th this thing is not just for showmanship listen if you know god and you love him and you see the needs of people you will covet the unction and the grace of god this has nothing to do with showmanship when people begin to make showmanship out of it, it's, it's inaccurately used. Hallelujah. Let's correct things now. Let's recreate things now. Please lift your hands. I want to pray for you. Oh, come, oh, come, me, man, and run some captivities. Why, yeah. Oh, come, oh, come, man, and ransom captivity, Israel. Rejoice, rejoice for Emmanuel has come to us his israel in the name that is above all names i decree and declare right now every door that has been closed over anyone here in the name of jesus the son of the living god i command that door be open now now be open now be open now
the bible says have you heard of this saying that a city gives birth in one day but he said as soon as zion travails he says she shall give birth to son i decree and declare whatever you have been incubating for a long time revealed to you by the spirit but yet to manifest there is grace for performance and i command that you must have a manifestation now i decree it i declare it by the power of the holy ghost manifested blessings manifested miracles hallelujah i decree and declare where you have to struggle for everything labor for everything i open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings i open you up to a dimension of prepared blessings in the name of jesus christ i don't know who has despised the grace of god upon your life he said and jabez was more honorable than his brethren i prophesy to you may an unction come upon your life tonight that will distinguish you i decree it i declare it. may an unction come upon your life tonight that distinguishes you in the name of jesus christ the bible says elijah told ahab saddle your ass and run for i hear the sound of the abundance of rain and Ahab was already light years ahead of Elijah but the Bible says the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and all of a sudden he started running on barefoot listen the Bible says that the disciples were six hours ahead of Jesus moving on their boat and Jesus got up and started walking on water there are many of you there are several things that have limited your pace I want to prophesy speed for you there is a grace that makes men to pursue to overtake to recover I speak to you in the name of Jesus as I pray for you the anointing of God will come on some of you and you will want to run physically please hold them I release that grace that grace for speed receive that grace now speed 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 no delay I command speed speed of accomplishment speed of accomplishment in the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah Isaiah 6 it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise verse 3 says Gentiles you won't look for them again Gentiles shall come to your light and even their arrogant kings to the brightness of your rising it says where you have been deserted so that no man passes through you I will make you an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations I decree and declare from today every gift you have every dream every ability that is dormant and not being blessed and rewarded I command Gentiles to come to your light now I command Gentiles to come to your light, to come to your business, to come to your profession, to come to your ministry. I make it so by the Spirit of the Living God. Hallelujah. And David said, is there any man of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness? And they went to bring a crippled man called Mephibosheth. And when he came, he sat down with David and he says, you will continue to dine with me here. In the name of Jesus, where your strength cannot take you. Where your current level of achievement cannot take you. I decree and declare may the hand of God that picks a man from a dunghill to a place of prominence may that hand pick you to the next level of your life may that hand pick you to the next level of your life hallelujah it says and I will restore to you the years 
alas master for it was borrowed they borrowed an axe head and it fell double trouble and he said no don't worry where fell it i want to speak to people here who have lost things you have lost relationships you have lost money you have lost opportunities there is a system in the kingdom where they can call back things he said they are taken for a prey and none say it restore in the name of jesus by the name of he who can manipulate time and make yesterday become tomorrow and tomorrow become yesterday i command a restoration now i command a restoration now i command Hear me anyone here called jobless you are looking for a job or any of your loved ones in the parable that jesus gave he saw some people sitting idle he said why sittest thou idle he said no man employ us and he said go to the vineyard when he speaks there is always a job in the name of jesus i create a space for you now in the name of the lord jesus i create a space for you now I speak anyone here or anyone standing for any family that has had delay especially in the area of fruitfulness he said be fruitful the first command he gave man right now in the name of Jesus hear me Mary said how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man he didn't say Joseph will come he said the power of the highest shall overshadow you therefore i prophesy everything that represents unfruitfulness it dies now in the name of jesus it dies now in the name of jesus i speak to everyone God worry. carry your children now carry your children now every aspect of your life that represents barrenness be it in the works of your hands be it in your finances in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I command supernatural results supernatural results supernatural results I pray for those who wrote jam and didn't like their results I change the result now I change the results now I change the results now hallelujah every family here that has refused to move forward i don't care for what reason in the name that is above all names your accomplishment for the next one month will dwarf what you have done in the last five years in the name of jesus believe it help them please believe it in the name of jesus This is one of my favorite blessings to people the ministry of destiny help us i discovered brothers and sisters hear me that it always flows from god through men everything money can buy relationships can buy it there are needless battles needless battles that relationships can solve the distance between you and the next testimony may just be a relationship but you see no destiny helper comes by his by himself they are called they are called they never come by themselves they do not even know he says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon in the name of jesus whoever must speak for you in high places in this season whoever must endorse the testimony of god upon your life as a man of god as a businessman whoever must advocate for you where your voice cannot reach i prophesy to the north i prophesy to the south i prophesy to the east and west wherever your destiny helpers are i command them to come into your life now Hallelujah. Listen. 
I know a woman years ago when we held our crusade in 2009 in Abuja it was her camp that we used she's not even educated but she had access to two people a very wealthy family that needed a miracle and she prayed for them and they became destiny helpers let me tell you something the easiest way to be wealthy is through relationships somebody can get up by the spirit and make you a partaker of his blessings are we together now we've discussed on finances and all the principles but brothers and sisters there is a dimension of speed that God can give a man and this is to help you be established fast so that you can focus on the purposes of the kingdom there is this spirit that makes people to be established so late it's not that they are lazy you cannot be established over 100,000 per month. Believe me. You cannot be established over 50,000 per month. You are too generous to even keep that money. And whilst you give, God will orchestrate men, but we have learned that Satan can hinder them. I'm praying specifically for finances. I want to invoke the mystery of divine supply. There is such a reality like supernatural provision. This ministry is a, is a tearsome testimony. Of what happens when men covenant with themselves to make sure you rise he said men came to david in the cave of adulam entered a covenant with themselves that they must make him king you don't need plenty of people you just need one person anointed and directed wherever your financial helper is in the name that is above all names i declare that between now and the next two weeks of june may they appear in your life hallelujah every dying business here every dying career every dying ministry that is as though you are not called i give life to that which is dying now i give life to that which is dying now hallelujah father it is my prayer from my heart for your people that by miracle service june you will return here 10 times better. Literally, 10 times better. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. I want to release something. There are people here you love God. I gave you an example of this anointing. There needs to be an upgrade. You see, the thing with the anointing is, if it is there, it is there. If it is not there, it is not there. It's as simple as that. The anointing, is a very obvious quality of God it's not something you struggle to see there are many of us especially pastors who are trusting God for certain dimensions of grace it can manifest as anything wisdom strategies supernatural grace the grace for performance I want to pray for you activations are very necessary to drive people into great results I stretch my hands right now in the name of Jesus, every dimension of the anointing that is available in this house, every dimension from prophetic dimensions, Zabo Sikata, there are people receiving it now. There are others is being activated, others is being multiplied. In the name of Jesus, I open you up now. Strange levels of the prophetic strange levels the eyes that see and the ears that hear the impulses of the spirit i pray right now the manifestation of the spirit of revelation receive it right now revelation inside 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 take it now take it now revelation revelation into the mysteries of the kingdom hallelujah every operation of the gift of the spirit that is barren in your life and needed for your destiny i stretch my hands and i activate it now receive it right now i activate it now i activate it now i activate it now by the power of the holy spirit i release upon you right now fresh mantle for leadership 
supernatural dimension of the leadership grace let it come upon you you may be weak but it will distinguish you in the name of Jesus Christ but thou shall remember the Lord thy God it is he that giveth thee power brothers and sisters there is such a thing called the power the anointing the unction the capacity to create an atmosphere around you that attracts wealth I don't know how many people it will please the Lord to release this grace but I stretch my hands let it please the God of heaven to bring men into this dimension right now receive it now the power to prosper the power to prosper you may be weak but the power to prosper bring in favor the ministry of men into your life hallelujah I don't know what has brought your prayer life down but right now in the name of Jesus fresh fire upon your altar fresh fire upon your altar capacity to pray in the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ hear me whoever fights you goes down instantly I say it again whoever fights you whether in the secret or the open goes down instantly it says you shall call on Aaron and his sons he said and you shall take your honor and give him honor is a mantle is transferable let me tell you this thing called honor is not about accomplishment there is a grace that makes people distinguished I pray for you from today that grace for honor I release it upon your life may you be honored at the gates of your destiny may you be strangely honored at the gates of your destiny whoever has said over his dead body for you to move forward tonight may their prayers be answered hallelujah two more prayer points and we're done I pray for your family we believe in family in this place no matter how lifted you are if your family is not lifted he said as for me and my house we believe in family we pray for our children whether in the womb or born we pray I prophesy over every family here that the devil is trying to corrupt the testimony of God's faithfulness tonight in the name of Jesus supernatural lifting for every family 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 and finally I pray for you in a way you have never seen whoever looks at your face I compel them to favor you listen the Bible says Esther found favor on everyone that looked at her for as long as you made contact with Esther and you looked at her face you were compelled by an anointing believe me I have seen this thing work in my life I prophesy to you men who have no business blessing you as they look at you I compel it from their spirit may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you may they bless and favor you thank you for lifting thank you for lifting thank you for lifting We're rounding up but the Lord is giving me a word here the Lord is speaking to a family here and he's saying I should tell you it will be like a dream when in three weeks it will change your life it will be like a dream 21 days in three weeks he will change your life whoever this is for I release it to you in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord is also speaking to one person 
you are going to start a business next month on the 5th and I'm seeing before 31st it has made you a millionaire in the name of Jesus I'm not motivating you I'm speaking as the spirit is giving me unction you don't believe it you will never see it never ever see it every difficulty you came here with in the name of Jesus you leave it down here and walk back free in the name of Jesus quickly in one minute everyone still standing I want to make two altar calls now very quickly the first please keep standing everybody no moving around inside outside please there are people here men and women who you have seen the things that the Lord has done by his spirit please let's keep standing to honor them and whilst you watch the power of God move the Holy Spirit began to convict you that you need to belong to this family of faith the family of the Lord Jesus Christ you are saying man of God if you will pray for me I'm ready to completely surrender my heart to Jesus I don't care how many times you have come out in response to an altar call the second category of people who will join them are those who at one time you have made commitments for the Lord Jesus Christ but you have found yourself derailing in many ways and you're saying man of God if you will lead me I will run I will run run to Jesus now these two categories of people I know there are people outside overflow one two three wherever you are please our time is gone I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain I'm going to count five wherever you are leave your seat and run now please clear the way for them one quickly quickly let's honor them as they come quickly run to Jesus now please quickly inside outside young and old quickly quickly I have decided to follow Jesus no turning back run to Jesus no turning Please keep coming don't sit back there now look at me brothers and sisters I appreciate you for this great decision you have made the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away when you come to him he has the power to make you you have no ability to change yourself but you have the willingness to hand over your life I want to pray for you listen I don't want you to just recite this as a poem I want you to mean it from the depth of your heart standing before Jesus the firstborn among we the begotten and his holy church I want you to make this confession from the depth of your heart lift your right hand as a symbol of surrender and say after me Lord Jesus say it again Lord Jesus I believe in you that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me tonight I willingly receive your life into my spirit I declare with my mouth the Lord Jesus and I confess with my heart that God raised him from the dead I declare right now that eternal life is mine I receive it into my spirit I'm free from the power of sin the flesh and Satan from today I move forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus keep your hands lifted I pray for you spirit of the living God you represent the presence of Jesus now in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying in a very supernatural way spirit of the living God by the power of the Holy Spirit let these ones never be the same again 
in the name of Jesus Christ may they never be the same again I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit that their lives will be objects of praise in the name of Jesus I declare your sins forgiven I declare a new life for you I break away from you every influence of darkness capable of jeopardizing the quality of God's life in you I release you to be victorious I make you victorious by the power that is in the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord thank you for this great decision now I want you to follow the lady waving her hands they would um, lead you outside have a few details and then um, just communicate a few things to you please cooperate with them the Lord bless you I love you and congratulations very quickly please guide them guide them very quickly let's do this hello scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you